尊敬的战友们好，尊敬的国内的所有的同胞们好。China, uh, we are February seventh, and and then we are coming back, and uh, today I am wearing this clothes, and uh, it's matching very well with Karen and uh, Miss. Uh, so today, so today, our interpreters is not going to be heard on on site. We and then uh, every show. <laughs> hey, by the way, you should understand we're in New York City, the middle of, of Midtown Manhattan with yeah, Central Park. Yeah, that's the, and Miles Kwok is the best dressed yeah, man in the whole city. Man, best man dressed man in the whole city of New York. Yeah. Fashion capital. And once again, I have my green pants on. <laughs> man, man of the people. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bannon. Uh, he is uh, trying to uh, tell me off with this way. Uh, that, but then um, Mr. Bannon has long hair. And, and Mr. Bannon has long hair. This is a very beautiful mane, and then I was so envious. There's so many channels of voices coming through. It's very disconcerting. Okay, so today, uh, and um, uh, Karen had changed new clothes. Uh, your husband bought it for you, right? No, you bought it. Uh, okay, so I bought the clothes for Karen. Uh, but but uh, please don't mis misunderstand, okay? I only bought this wardrobe for her for the broadcasting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So yesterday, uh, Mr. Bannon and myself and Miss Karen, very honored that we had this great broadcasting in the February 6th. And uh, we were answering a lot of questions raised by Luda and Sarah. And online, we had a great, great impact. Um, so how great do you, can you imagine? You may be able to see us online, particularly Mr. Bannon. He showed such a uh, charismatic image. And, and also Karen, yesterday she answered the question and she created a lot of impact online, uh, particularly a lot of these young people. And uh, they have, they, they were really, really uh, appreciate Karen's answer. But then we did not actually show there were 200 million of our viewers from mainland China. And so all of that, a uh, lot of the viewers were newly joining us. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the our friends, they were watching our program a lot. But then we have a lot of the new viewers because that they like Mr. Bannon and Miss Karen, particularly the younger generation. They liked it, liked her so much. And then Mr. Bannon and showed such a charismatic side that a lot of people were very appreciative. And also yesterday, do you know that after the program happened, a lot of things I'm going to share with the, share them with you. So today we continue to chat with Luda and Sarah. Uh, so they they can represent lots of our friends to raise question to Mr. Bannon and Karen. So now the first question would be raised by Luda. Luda, is your time now, Mr. Luda? Where's Luda? He, he must know Karen. He must know yeah. Karen. He must know that that uh, Sarah has a better question, so he's hiding. <laughs> so he's, he's hiding. He's, he's waiting for waiting for Sarah's first out. question. Yeah, he now that's Sarah. So Sarah, you you can ask your question. I can hear you, but I can not hear her. Hear him. So Luda, can you hear us? We cannot hear. 
I can hear some voice from Luda. No, I cannot hear you at all. Okay, we can hear now. We can hear now. Can you hear now? Yes, can you hear now? Okay, so Luda, you can raise question. I can hear Luda. I can hear Luda. Uh, no, so Mr. Luda, you can raise question. And uh, Sarah, between Sarah and Luda, they can hear each other, but perhaps they cannot hear us. Okay, so he can hear us now. Okay. Mr. Bannon, yesterday you were talking about Amanda Bennett yesterday from VOA, and then in fact, that it has created quite a lot of uh, impact. And also, Shasha Gong and Dong Fang, they posted some Twitter messages. And a lot of us concerned about Amanda Bennett. Maybe she has stopped the interview from uh, for Guo Wenhui, and then but then they stop broadcasting your interview. So in the U.S., is there any legal channel that can pursue Amanda Bennett? Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Mr. Bennett, can you hear me? Mr. Bennett, can Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Now, okay. So the question, yeah, the question, the question was that. Um, uh, Mr. Bannon, the question was that uh, Amanda Bennett, and then she did not broadcast your interview and stop um, Miles Gore's interview. So is there any legal channel in the U.S. that can pursue uh, Amanda Bennett and prosecute her or something? Can you, do you, can you answer this question? It's a great question. This is about Amanda Bennett and Voice of America. What and, uh, you know, awesome. one of the things that, a couple of things have to happen here. I think, number one, the media has to get onto this story, and I think it's incumbent upon us to get the facts out. Uh, number two is uh, obviously people in Congress uh, is, has the oversight on the VOA and even people in the administration, right? And then number three is any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, outside, any kind of outside interpretation. Uh, I would think that's what's um, most important. The first thing is to kind of get this out and actually get the frame of the narrative. Uh, one of the things that's quite evident is that under the leadership of Amanda Bennett, the Voice of American Mandarin Service is not really providing the service that it was set up to do, to be like a, a radio-free Europe or a, a radio, you know, a TV-free Europe that gets promulgates out to people in Asia and in mainland China uh, what the truth is. I think one of the disturbing things is, we said yesterday, the fact pattern is very disturbing. The fact pattern that she, uh, that number one, she, she was never really pushing, and you've noticed Mandarin Service doesn't really push the true story of what's going on in CCP. What they want to do is get access into China, and so they, they, they pull their punches on every investigation, they pull their punches on everything. Uh, number two is that they literally pulled the plug on the live interview with Miles Kwok, and that interview is so important because of the time frame in which it happened. The time frame when it happened was in the spring of 2017, I think it was in April. And that was when this whole issue of H&A and, and its ownership started to come up. And that's really, I think, one of the first moments that Miles Kwok really became known in the West, not just his impact he had had on people in mainland China, but became known in the West as someone who was actually speaking truth to power and bringing up these facts that for a long time the financial press over here the, the financial institutions, the American elites had been in business with the CCP, with this kind of radical cadre. His whole expose, which started in the spring of 17 on H&A, which you've got to remember, at the time, this is probably in the spring of 2017, Miles, the most powerful financial institution in the world, right? It was buying stakes, I think in, it bought a 10% stake in Deutsche Bank. It was buying other financial institutions. It was on a buying spree. That buying spree, by the way, financed by Western financial institutions and also by Chinese financial institutions. Uh, one of the key things in that was that how many of the world's elite were really making money off of H&A, &A, particularly at that same time where Miles was actually exposing the fact that it had gone from something owned by the people in Hanan or as a regional 
you know, airline and airline services company to a multinational uh, conglomerate that I think you could argue had a value of almost a trillion dollars, really before Apple and these companies became trillion dollars. So in pulling the plug on that, once again, Voice of America showed they weren't interested in it. They haven't had any interest in really pursuing those stories. And then when I gave them this one hour interview for the 40th anniversary, the 40th anniversary of the Mandarin service, uh, they just, they, they didn't show it. And then the last thing was that they terminated Sasha Gong, Gong and, uh, and, and reprimanded others who, who quite frankly were just uh, doing their job and trying to expose the corruption of CCP. So the one thing that we're going to do is, is a full-scale uh, investigation. One of the rule of law kickoff uh, as we've targeted uh, the, the kind of the waterfront of where we're going to uh, focus on. We have a number of areas of focus. One of those is clearly going to be Voice of America. I think it's a disgrace that American uh, taxpayers, people who, who think very highly of the Chinese people and love the Chinese people, um, are paying for this VOA Mandarin service that is really in cahoots with, with, um, you know, with the CCP. Uh, I have found in the U.S. government that there are a number of people, right, and some of those we were able to get out of government service that had too close relationships uh, with CCP cadre members, this radical kind of cadre. And so uh, it's going to be one of the biggest uh, things that we do is in this year of action, 2019 being this year of action, one of the things we're going to do is very much focus on the VOA, uh, on the Man Mandarin service, and particularly its head, Amanda Bennett, and other relationships she has. You know, she's married into the Graham family uh, of the Washington Post, which owns the Kaplan Education Services. We're going to drill down and find out all the relationships they have with China and all the business relationships they have with China. There's something that stinks to high heaven about this, and we are committed to get to the bottom of it. Mr. Bannon had talked about VOA Amanda Bennett and the next steps action towards her. Now that we can see a very clear picture, and he told me about that uh, behind door as well. In fact, in fact, that uh, 2017 uh, stoppage is really unfair, and also that she denied the broadcasting of Mr. Bannon's interview. So we are going to take action against her. So, Mr. Bannon. Okay. I bring up yesterday, and this is coming off of um, the president's speech. I want to go back to his State of the Union speech the mm -hmm. other night, and then you know he was very upfront for the, for the audience that saw it about these investigations that are coming after him. Yesterday, you saw a hole on the on the Capitol Hill, the House Intelligence uh, apparatus. You saw uh, a, a discussion here with the Southern District of New York, and NASA are going to start interviewing the the Trump executives of Trump Tower. What I talked to you about, this pressure is coming on the president. So, every day in the United States, you hear another, and it's the front page of every paper. It's the lead on every morning TV show. CNN goes on and on and on. And I'm not here trying to defend the president, okay? I'm not, this is not trying to defend the president. But every day, you see nothing but the, the investigative apparatus of Capitol Hill and the U.S. government and the state attorney generals, and they're all focused on Trump. Right, they're all focused on Trump and, and, the, and, and the Russians, right? You have these massive scandals, massive scandals going on at the same time, right? With people like Higginbotham in the Justice Department and Amanda Bennett and, and you know, just across the board. Anything related to China, you don't hear anything about. So it's just the question's got to be asked and it's incumbent upon us to push this is that how can you have this massive massive corruption, influence peddling, money laundering, government officials being bought off, other government officials not doing what they're supposed to. How can you do this at every level, from the highest levels in, in, in American finance to the CCP uh, to what's happening over here in the United States? And you literally hear nothing about it, right? You hear nothing about it. Yet with Russia and Trump every day, it's all you hear nonstop. <clears throat> it's the equivalent, <clears throat> it's the equivalent of what I keep saying about the Russian who was poisoned in the city of London and Khashoggi versus the 500 in China that you absolutely hear the Western media doesn't do anything. So I'm not a believer in coincidence. There, 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 there's something deeply wrong with this picture in that the media is just uh, been critics of this. So this is why, just to go back, the Amanda Bennett Voice of America, because Voice of America Mandarin Service has to be the gold standard. 
It has to be at the equivalent of what Radio Free Europe was, what Voice of America in Europe was. It has to be a truth teller, and it has to be fearless. It has to be fearless in its, um, its talking truth to power. And I don't think there's any time more in history, Miles, that someone needs talking truth to power than uh, people, you know, basic citizens talking power to the radical element of the CCP. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bannon, and uh, also thank you, our interpreter. The conspirator, the conspiracy, that word cannot be used all the time. Uh, okay. And and the Mr. As the Mr. Bannon, maybe he is going to laugh at the the word conspiracy, um, and then also that. Uh, and the, the word is wrongly used. And also, but anyway, Mr. Bannon, you're talking about uh, Amanda Bennett, the word, uh, rule of law foundation that we are going to take action, that's for sure. I reiterate here, Miles Gore, we have, uh, Ma, uh, we have two arms in the rule of law foundation. I am the sponsor, but then the Mr. Bannon is the chairman and he's going to try his utmost and then talking to the board of the directors and then also that uh, and then realize the promise that he made he's going to take action and mr luda's question was wonderful and luda last night and uh, but that i had something un unhappy about it because he's and then he 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 is actually um, you know he is actually broadcasting while that he's eating dinner. I cannot tolerate that. And uh, the thing is that Mr. Luda actually and uh, having a lot of food in front of him. So that but then anyway, I saw him eating. I'm very happy. But coming up, I am going to continue our competition. Yesterday we had three versus three. We don't know about this question. How? Whether maybe he has one point now, Miss Sarah. The next question is for from you. I like the camera lens today. The angle today is wonderful. Miles likes beautiful shots of himself. <laughs> <laughs> so the cameraman, <laughs> cameraman is doing a very good job. <laughs> And do you know why I'm so fond of uh, Mr. Bannon? It's because that he always likes to encourage others, and then he always belittle himself, but then always encourage others, thinking others are beautiful. You cannot help to be fond of him. Now, can you hear us? Okay. Mr. Bannon, good morning. I am... Um, I, I, I can hear you, but a bit delay. So I'm going to ask you a question concerning about the rule of law foundation. Nowadays, a lot of the CCP uh, uh, officials, government officials being persecuted by the CCP and their family cannot be uh, allowed to go abroad. So how can we help them? And if they uh, come abroad to the European countries, or um, now maybe that you can communicate with uh, European countries, perhaps they can politically, uh, they can give a, the, these government officials' family political asylum. Can you give me some answer for that? That's a, that's a great question, Sarah. Thank you. Huh? A very good, quest very good question. Thank you for answering. Um, one of the things that uh, people should know is I, I met Miles is I spent a lot of time uh, working on this populist movement here in the United States, the movement that's basically the foundation for a lot of what President Trump does. So a lot of the many, many of the people that love President Trump and support President Trump and have for years, I'm very involved in that movement. I'm also very involved over in Europe uh, with a number of these kind of populist, nationalist, sovereignty movements of people that are trying to get their freedom back and trying to, it's the little guys movement there that you now see coming to power with people like Salvini or Orban in Hungary, Salvini in Italy, uh, Le Pen in France, um, and it's really focused on these European parliamentary elections that are happening in May. One of the things I committed to Miles and to the rest of the people associated with the Rule of Law Fund is that I will be talking to people throughout the spring about this whole concept of special status, right, for people that are being uh, really uh, oppressed by the CCP, people that would need uh, special status. 
And so I, hopefully the, you know, the political asylum process here in the United States is continuing to work. Uh, we, right now we obviously have this huge controversy about political asylum given what's happening on our southern borders. It's something that's trying to be worked out uh, in a fair and equitable uh, manner. Uh, but also in Europe, I think that the, and they've, had, they've had a massive migrant issue there, but they still have political asylum. So yes, I think given, Sarah, the special circumstances of the oppression of people in China by CCP, and the more that we can get that out in the media, the more that we can tell their stories, the more that we can tell the 500, and particularly not just them, but their family members, their friends are being oppressed. I think people in, in Europe uh, will be uh, quite awakened for this. Although our goal, as remember, our goal at Rule of Law Fund, that's an interim step that we hope to do to protect people. Our goal is to make sure one day that there actually is rule of law in uh, China, right? Because as I know from all the expatriates I know, every one of them that I've met here in Europe, every one I've met in the United States, a very high priority is that they would all love to get back to China and to be able to live in a peaceful and prosperous China where there actually was the rule of law and that they, they couldn't be intimidated by a totalitarian government. Uh, thank uh, Sarah's question was wonderful. Now, um, I think it is very critical. And Mr. Bannon also gave you a uh, thumb up, so we are one to one now. now. At the moment, competition is not great enough. Now, so Mr. Luda, can you continue to ans uh, ask question? Mr. Luda? Mr. Luda, can you hear us? Mr. Luda, can you hear us? Okay, Mr. Luda, can you hear us? So there was some kind of a delay or or some kind of a latency. Uh, okay, I have a question. Huawei company for this is a question for Mr. Bannon. Huawei is being prosecuted by the Justice Department and there are 20 uh, complaints and then also expatriate uh, Meng Wanzhou back to the United States to be tried. And then so and then there are the uh, 213 of the Chinese corporation were being uh, investigated by the Justice Department. We understand that. So from that, we can see that not only White House is taking action on the Justice Department and also that uh, some uh, SEC also taking action. So I, un I want to understand that in the wake of the Huawei, any other company would be investigated by the Justice Department or more any other company would have any um, legal action taken against them? Yeah, this is. I think this is one of the critical things that we're facing right now. Is that this whole investigation in Huawei, and particularly its relationship with uh, uh, with um, um, officials in the U.S. government, with politicians, exactly what Huawei has been doing, uh, not just in the United States but throughout the world. I anticipate. You know, I, I don't know this, but I anticipate, uh, Mr. Luda, that this could expand into a wide-ranging investigation. I mean. Part of this goes back to the ZTE situation in the, in the spring of this year. And uh, in that regard, uh, ZTE was kind of given a pass at the time. And one of the reasons was because of the high value added jobs that actually people had in China and the consideration of uh, the president and the administration to make sure that things weren't done that could cause bi a bigger unemployment problem in China. And so you have to remember, we have to balance this. Uh, number one, there's a, as I said, a great fondness and a great affinity of the American people for the Chinese people, and they want to make sure the Chinese economy is, is prosperous and moving along. The other is this kind of CCP uh, had this radical cadre uh, kind of, uh, you know, makes the system work for them and for nobody else. And I think that's where in Huawei you're starting to see it, particularly its, its, its inextricably linked issues with the PLA. I think that's all going to come out. For the Chinese audience, I just want to make sure to, to reiterate, this was an extraordinary, extraordinary event. The Huawei um, really arrest or the, uh, the, the uh, detainment of the CFO in, um, in Canada, right, 
was an absolutely, uh, it was an absolutely um, kind of a breathtaking uh, moment. Uh, and her to be then uh, extradition papers put in and to be indicted uh, back here. And then the implication there's going to be, you know, a 20 count charge and there'll be more because she is the CFO, I think, as soon as they get into the financial records. But yeah, I would anticipate that this, this investigation uh, could expand and it could expand quite, quite rapidly. I think if you tie this back to the Higginbotham situation, which shocked people here in the United States that a senior official in the Justice Department could actually have been taking $70 million, right, from the JOLO situation. It gets you that you just don't have any idea of how big this, uh, how big this issue is going to be with, um, with um, uh, Huawei, and we're just going to have to see. But I would anticipate, uh, given the, the depth, if you haven't read the indictment, uh, it's, pretty, uh, you know, it's pr pretty shocking that this could go on. You're also think, starting to see around the world where Huawei has made deals with other governments, people are starting to question whether that is really a Chinese intelligence network uh, getting this government into the, into the telecommunication systems and actually into military intelligence and other things. So I think it's this, this scandal uh, is, only gonna, is only gonna expand and expand uh, rapidly. I think one of the key things people should focus on is the fact that Canada, right, which at one point looked a little wobbly. Canada has really has really thrown in here. So I think I believe Miles and uh, Mr. Luda that this thing is only at the very very beginning. It's going to expand quite rapidly. Uh. Sarah, uh, Sarah's question and uh, Mr. Luda's question and uh, very good. Now and then the Luda is having one point. Now Sarah must catch up. I must see a l I see a lot of the posting from my friends and and uh, asking Mr. Bannon's Rule of Law Foundation can can the Rule of Law Fund help a lot of the persecuted people being uh, uh held by the embassy. In fact in fact, that there are some embassies in various countries can actually help. For example, like Italy or the Spain or Belgium or Brazil. These are the the friendly countries, and 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 then Mr. Bannon also know these pres the presidents of these countries. Not but and then also they're not only friendly, and also he is very influential of those countries. So that is why that. He, if he, Mr. Bannon is very against CCP, and those countries, the president also against the CCP. So, if there were really some of the government officials and also their family, if they were persecuted by the China, and then so if they go to those country, would they be allowed for afford um, political asylum held by those country? So our work is continue. We are. We are going to create an alliance we, so that um, anyone that who were persecuted, then um, Rural Law Fund can help you, and then we can help you to get to uh, US or uh, UK or the Germany, maybe applying for the political asylum. We can help you. And uh, so, so we, it's not like in the past, and, uh, but the thing is that at the moment, it is very important. It is our goal to help you. And it, but then the listing company, like Mr. Luther just saying, uh, listing company lie to people and get money from the people, and then rule of law fund also going to help those people, and then to to get the investigation ongoing. And as we've seen that, at court, but that we are uh, we need to adhere to the law of the country to prosecute uh, to prosecute those people. Now, if you have information and then you can tell us that um, how we can go against the CCP that we can help you. So we can help you economically and to support you economically. Uh, we have attorneys and uh, we, they are working a long time, many hours in order to help you according to the law in the US to help you. So I believe that the rule of law under the um, under Mr. Bannon, we can have a lot of um, impact. So Venezuela, th the last two days happened a lot of things, and in fact, that I talked to people, and then no, a lot of people said that I never imagined that Venezuela and the Maduro 
can and then also Chavez, they could actually have all this kind of a thing happening in Venezuela. And then the you know, in in Venezuela they, and then the Maduro has the doing all that, and the, the army did not have any action. You know why? It is because there was civil civilian group, particularly they came from you Brazil and the U.S. In a civilian, uh, in they have given them a lot of the messages, and then telling them that they are going to protect the people of uh, of uh, Venezuela. So that is why that uh, Venezuela, there are so many people and they are feeling safe and that's why that they did not have riots and they did not have protests on the street. And also they are spending a lot of money for the police. Um, and then also the mercenary as well, that um, a lot of a mercenary coming all over the world. But even so that even so that they spent so much money, they were not able uh, to um, they even with all that help, then you know the thing is that they were not able to actually cr completely creating the Maduro. And the thing is that so. So the thing is that at the moment, so at the moment we see that the, the Venezuela that that they have this this happen that they have this uh, president happening, but at the same time that the country is peaceful, so that it is not having any great riots. So that is what we need to learn: that the peaceful transition of power, and then also that the and then also whatever happened to the government that the people are safe, and so that is very important. But Mr. Bannon and the forming the Rule of Law Foundation, we need to go against the CCP people at the same time that we need to take action but we need to change our um, uh, idea as well mr bannon yesterday we were talking uh, for the rule of law foundation and then in fact a lot of people are trying to make donation in fact that japan singapore and taiwan a lot of people and uh, coming uh, for us and telling us that they want to uh, make donation. But the thing is that a lot of these uh, donating accounts, they were not able to actually make a donation for the in the US. So, But the, I will tell you that if you make donation, that it is going to be used just for uh, going against the the Chinese Communist Party. And we will definitely use that. And then also that you will know where the money goes. And then I know that there are these... Uh, the, and then... So if you need to make profit, and that is not for the Rule of Law Foundation, but the thing is the Rule of Law Foundation definitely is just going uh, for the, uh, again, the CCP. Now, Sarah, you can ask question. Yeah. Something to, to Miles, Sarah, just one second. Let's go back to the, uh, to, 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 to the, the, the core of this, is that the key for, um, for, for, for talking not just to the U.S. government, but for other governments, right? Because they're under pressure. You have to remember these European and South American countries are under tremendous pressure by CCP. You know, not to believe any of these stories and not to believe any of this. And you take a specific example of what happened in France with H&A when, you know, there was tremendous pressure to look the other way and just, it was another, you know, it was just another, the guy just fell off uh, taking a selfie. And maybe now they're saying he committed suicide. But there, there was no untoward um, activity driven by CCP. All of these governments throughout the world are under tremendous pressure by the CCP just to look the other way. So the key, and this is what will be the key going forward, in order to get special status or whatever you can try to apply for, is we have to get the facts. The truth here is very powerful, and the truth can't be uh, withheld. So we, what we want is more transparency and, and more truth. And I think that's one of the things in the key part of the action that we can take in the rule of law of fund, and what we will take is to basically collect the facts, do investigations with the top quality team we have here and others, other advisors and consultants, and with that and with those facts be able to make at your case, right? Number one, to make your case in front of the world and particularly in front of the world's media and then to be able to make sure that government officials know what the facts are. The key, and for everybody out there listening, particularly people in mainland China, if you can hear this, the key is for us to be able to get the facts. Once you get the facts and you can build a narrative off of those facts, it's very tough, I think, for governments to look the other way, particularly given the oppression uh, of, of many of the families here and some of the things that happen to the families. Uh, Mr. Bannon had or also in detail telling you about the Rule of Law Foundation's mission in here. I must tell you, again, 
to express my gratitude. And uh, November 20th, someone called Mr. Bannon, and uh, he is actually a general. He wanted to make a donation of uh, 1 billion US dollars. But in fact, uh, Mr. Bannon had not seen this uh, general face-to-face uh, -face yet. But the, the thing is that, that the, he also, this general actually showed us a lot of uh, information uh, now that, but the, also I have met with the two or three of the organization going to make donation, particularly that one from Taiwan is one of the top 10, um, you know, the wealthiest uh, uh, family. And in fact, that they told us that they're going to make it into the will, the part of the, 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 the estate is going for the uh, donation uh, for the Rob Law Firm. Okay, so, uh, and then someone also said to us that they want to meet with Mr. Ban Bannon and then also that they are going to meet, they want to meet with the Mr. Bannon and they're going to make donation of 500 million to uh, Mr. Bannon. And then the, the mission is to rescue the Xinjiang people. They, they the, the, the Xinjiang people being persecuted and they want to release them. They want to help them and they want to meet with the Mr. Bannon. Now, I said that I answered to them that let's, talk about that to our lawyer first. Now, because a lot of the do donors, they don't want to just do things for themselves. And the people who work for them, who, who work for the rural law firm, they're not working for themselves. They're working for others. They're trying to help others. That is what that is what CCP would never do. CCP only care for their genitalia, and they only care for their own, um, you know, their, 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 their sex. And then so they are, they, so, but I think that we, in fact, that uh, we we met with uh, Singapore's uh, family, two families, in fact, and in 1992 they worked with me before the Singapore family, and in fact, the Singaporean family wanted to make donation to the uh, World of Law Foundation. A large part of the estate wanted to be donated to the Rural Law Foundation, and then also that they want to make donation to the Rural Law Foundation of the vehicle fleets that they have, like uh, that each of the Mercedes-Benz costs three million dollars, you know, but they want to donate it to the Rural Law Foundation. So we have a lot, a lot of the resources, and then, but then the thing is that Venezuela, they can have this peaceful situation, even though that the government is is uh, is a uh, Maduro, this uh, dictator government. But the thing is, a lot of people do things to try to stabilize the country and trying to stabilize civilians uh, and helping with the people. So that is why that it what is what we're going to learn, and that is what we're going to uh, do in the future. Now, Sarah, your question. Time for, for you to raise question. Uh, we have some latency, so we need to wait for her. Sarah, can you hear us? Uh, OK, so I can ask question. So thank you, Miles. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. I'm going to ask question concerning with the Rural Law Foundation. Now, Mr. Wang Qishan, he is in Germany and Europe and in the US. He is a most influential figure, and yet he has already privately, uh, you know, a store money, and then those money belong to the 1.4 billion of the people. So c do you think that we can find uh, those money out, and then if people provide information for you to find those money, would those people uh, being rewarded? And also a lot of a listing company in the U.S. and from China, and the, the thing is that those are fake information. Do you and do you think that the U.S. company is going to investigate those are fake um, information provided by the Chinese company as well? Boy, that's a great question. Let's let's start with the first part of that. The first part of that is I think it's very important. I think one of the the, the, the central um, parts of the rule of law fund is about the rule of law, and about how that would be hopefully um, um, implemented in China and to hold officials to that. One of the keys of the rule of law is to actually find out. I think, and part of the investigations. That's why the H and A investigation, the continuation of that, is so important. Is that it is. Uh, what actually had the senior members of the CCP stolen from the Chinese people, and particularly what have they tried to money launder out into the West, into the United States, into Europe, into other parts of Asia, Australia? How have they tried to get this money out of the country? 
which are really, it's the Chinese people's money. How, how did that money get out? Where does it go? What's the ownership? I think you're seeing the H&A investigation as the beginning. You're seeing a very thorough and systematic, what Miles did was a very thorough and systematic breakdown of H&A as a company, a trillion dollar company to really take it apart, actually see what the ownership structure is, see how that ownership structure took place, and see how kind of the cash flowed uh, back to certain people. That's why in the H&A case, what Miles did was basically <clears throat> under what's called discovery in the U.S. court system, actually go subpoena, right? He wanted their, he wanted their books and records. He wanted all the analysis that was done. He wanted all the presentations were done. He wanted to see the phone records, et cetera. He wanted to see a whole bunch of detail that actually tied, right, CCP cadre senior leadership to the management of H&A, and, and then to tie it to the financial institutions of the West, both the commercial banks that lend them the money and the investment banks that raise the money, and ultimately the hedge funds that made money off it. This whole network, this kind of financial apparatus here with the political apparatus in, in China, that whole apparatus working together as one, they work together as one, essentially to steal the Chinese people's money, right, and use the working people's money in the United States to finance it, to steal the working people in China's money so that it went to both the elite, the CCP, and the elite on Wall Street. People have to understand that are watching this broadcast, that is what the scam is. It's to use the people's money here, the pension funds and what's in the banks, to finance the basically robbing of the Chinese people's hard-earned living. That's the outrage here. That's one of the key things that, that we're going to try to do and, and we commit to do at the Rule of Law Fund is to take some specific examples of where this is happening and to bring it to light. I will tell you, if we continue on in the H&A investigation, and that investigation leads where we think it's, where it's going to be, I happen to believe that there are going to be criminal charges. We're just doing it in a lawsuit. So we have two things in the United States. One is civil and the other is criminal. Criminal is done by the state or the local officials, law enforcement, and the civil is when people sue each other. Miles' whole effort in the rule of law funds effort is now in the civil area to get that to get that information. I happen to believe, and this is just my personal belief, that as more information comes to light, you're going to see it go up to the criminal aspect of this. And so, yes, this is one of the rule of law fund. One of the central parts of it is to 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 investigate these uh, transactions that went that were financed by U.S. Uh, financial institutions, U.S. companies with the Chinese to understand the cash flows, to see how the money was laundered, who owned it, et cetera, and then to actually take it to the next level and give it to the appropriate authorities. Mr. Bannon, uh, uh, answering Mr. Ms. Sarah's question, very good. So I think that this is uh, already like a tie, okay? I can't remember exactly how many points, but Mr. Luda and uh, and then Mr. Luda's question is also very good. And then, and then the Ms. Sarah asked the question, and Mr. Bannon actually forgets some questions, probably because Sarah is too beautiful, right? And then so that he did not, uh, he forgot some of the questions. So, and then he only thinking about that uh, rule of law fund, right? Now, but the, it is a great question. So let me reiterate, for the uh, donation of uh, Rule of Law Foundation, I see a lot of the messages. They, they are talking about that uh, Mr. Bannon is magnificent and also that with a great mind and is, it's, uh, it's a very brave and courageous. It's like Wang Yangming, our philosopher. Now, let me tell you again about the donation. Now, well, maybe Mr. Bannon is not going maybe you just uh, listen to me first so you see that even now if but the thing is that if you have two thousand three thousand dollars then you should not just think about donation and then you should just thinking about your own livelihood first what kind of people should make donation if you have spare money and uh, if you donate this spare money then then you care where the money goes and then you make this donation you feel good then you should you should you should you should 
you should make that donation. Now the thing is that you need to understand where the money goes, right? It's not like that you should use your own money to make donation. If that is the money that you make and for your own livelihood, if you make if you if you make two thousand US dollars a month, that you should not make that donation. You know, like for example, like Guo Bao Sheng, he's such a uh, such a uh, scam con man, and then they, he is actually trying to cheat money out of people, and then he cheating money from the people that who are making money for themselves. Okay, so you you must have seen the document that uh, that our court case with the Guo Bao Sheng, right? And then we really don't encourage you to donate money if that money is actually your own money that for your own livelihoods to support your own life, you know. So I I, I am telling you that you should make donation only if you have spare money. And only Sarah, such a kind person, would actually donate money to Guo Bao Sheng. Guo Bao Sheng is such a con man. You must have, uh, you must be wiser. So I'm telling all of us here, comrades, if you have spare money, then you can make donation. But if you don't have spare money, don't make that donation. If you, if you have spare money, like several hundreds of a million dollars, yes, make that donation to us. Okay, so... But the thing is that, but the thing is that you, you, if you make the donation, um, even make the donation, if uh, somebody is spending that money and then you is not affecting your life, and that's okay, you should make the donation. Okay. Now I thank you very much, and now we are going to ask Luda to ask the next question. Uh, we know that Luda has some latency. We're going to wait for him. And the Ms. Luda probably go and take a skiving time to go and eat something. And so, but the thing is that we wait for him. Mr. Bannon, uh, when uh, Miles talk about the uh, overseas dissidents, right? And then we all care about them. Previously, did you understand the dissidents, human rights dissidents in the in foreign countries? Apart from you yourself, people around you, uh, Navarro and those kind of a politicians, would do they know anyone that is human rights dissident? What do they think about them? Oh, I think Would living in, it's, it's a good question. I think living in Washington, D.C., you know, we've, we've gotten to know many of the dissidents, uh, particularly from Tiananmen Square and from, and from the, uh, you know, from the years subsequent to that. Uh, the dissident community in Washington, particularly, is, 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 is pretty well organized, uh, pretty vocal, and has many intelligent people. Um, I, I think, though, we're in a, uh, a, a different phase, if I can say this, is that you've had for years kind of the, um, um, the democracy movement and the human rights movement, right? And th that's been a very important movement, and, they, and th th those communities are, are pretty well organized and are very vocal about getting their message out. But, but something has happened, I think, uh, in China over the last, I would say, five or ten years that I think now has raised it up almost beyond what has been the traditional dissident, uh, um, you know, population and kind of the human rights population. It's clearly something going on in China in the last 10 years, and I think personified, and that's why I say it's personified by uh, President Xi and Washi Shan and Li He and these others that are this, I think, radical cadre of the CCP that now seems like they want to expand out and become a hegemonic power. Right, and part of doing that is the absolute oppression first of the Chinese people, and particularly the oppression of the Chinese people through technology and, and kind of this new advances in technology. I think that is taking this up to the whole new level, and that's why I think the rule of law fund is to try to, you know, expose this. If you step back and look at the dissident communities and how they have uh, talked to politicians, how they've approached politicians, what they've done with politicians. Uh, they've had been pretty organized, but it hasn't been really on a mass scale. I think one of the things that now has shocked people, right, has shocked people is how brutal this, uh, this uh, totalitarian government has become against its own people, right? The brutality of the, of the social credit scores, of the 500 where you see these prominent people missing, the videos that Miles Kwok and others show all the time of people being beaten like dogs. It's kind of that convergence of all that that's really taken it up, I would say, kind of supra-dissident, uh, even more than the dissidents 
uh, have done over here for the last 10, 15, or 20 years. So th that community has been good, but it's been small. It has made contact to everybody. But just the information that's coming out today, I think, has started to so overwhelm the people in the West. And remember, one of the key things we're trying to do in the Rule of Law Fund, and what I'm personally trying to do is say, hey, you, you in the West have responsibility, right? If you're the owners of these buildings, if you're the, if you're the bankers, if you're the financiers, you don't, you don't get clean hands anymore. You just can't make the money, right, and live a nice lifestyle and understand that you made that money taking it away from the Chinese people and giving it to their oppressors that are really running prison camps, that are putting people in prison, that are murdering people, that are having people disappear, that there has to be a connection and you can no longer just go along with your life and kind of make this kind of money like you used to and be able to just kind of walk away from it. You are tied to the oppression of the Chinese people. And I think that's one of the key things the Rule of Law Fund is trying to do. And I think in that way, Mr. Luda, will actually make what the dissidents have been saying for the you know, last 15, 20, 25 years in places like Washington and London and other places, New York City, actually have more power. Uh, uh, Mr. Luda's question is very good. Mr. Bannon, he is he is actually um, the senior leaders in the U.S., right? So perhaps that he doesn't understand perhaps the dissidents in China now that. Um, but then the, we did not talk about this before. Now, in fact, the Mr. Bannon talked to me privately. Though we, I, I shared with him about the tragedy in China. You know, we have 1.4 billion people, and then we have a uh, June 4th massacre, and uh, we have a lot of additional exile to the U.S. And then yet, we first. It, Versus of Venezuela, there are 23 uh, million population, right, in Venezuela? Yes, should ah. Now, uh, so only 23 million of the population, they have, and then they have a lot of uh, human right dissidents, and uh, you see, and uh, they would use uh, social media, and then they would be peacefully to do this kind of uh, uh, changing of the government. And uh, but the thing is that they in but they are very different from the dissident in China. Now a lot of the dissidents that they come from China, they have a lot of they call for donations for the last 29 years, and also that they if they get a lot of a uh, donation. Uh, but the thing is, that a lot of people. And then, but then these dissidents, and they did not work. And then they only want people to make donation. And then they they would they would actually go to the congress to meet a, a councillor, a congressman, and take a photograph. And then they, they would call for donation. A lot of the dissidents were just asking for donation. But they they and then a lot of the people that in China wanted to make the donation. And then yeah, but they did not really do any real work. And in fact, that they are the, 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 because 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 you see a lot of the dissidents being exiled, and then they were initially the human rights uh, warrior. But the thing is that while that they're being exiled, their strength, their power being taken off. They they in fact that they were destroyed by the CCP. They did not. So the the thing is that all these dissidents in the overseas, they were not real dissidents. And then they were not really doing any work. In fact, that the Mr. Bannon understand there were dissidents. But the thing is that you, that he probably did not know that any dissident re doing real work. And then which, and then but Mr. Bannon, can you give, tell me any any uh, dissident organization? Can you know any one of them and name any one of them? And did you know what they do? And did you actually know that what they have achieved? And they only call for a donation. They only want people to donate, right? But the thing, and then yet every day they talk about the, uh, 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 they they only calling names of uh, the CCP, but they have not really achieved anything. But do you know that how many people are actually being persecuted? Now, I think that Mr. Bannon's um, um, Rule of Law Foundation, that you need to investigate not only the people that are persecuted by the Chinese government, you need to actually investigate those con people that using the name as being the dissident and the human right dissident, and then yet they're conning people's money. And then also, in fact, that they're destroying our actually human rights uh, activities. Like, for example, a lot of people, they were they seriously, they, they, in fact, that they were having a lot of the movement and they, they using the name of movement and then trying to get money, trying to get donation. But these, these, 
these campaigns were not real. And then a lot of these campaigners, they become quite big, you know, quite organized, and then in fl flushing, and then they, they, they try to get people to do massage for them and all that. They are making donation, and then they, and then also that they are, uh, they are using dissident as a name and helping people, they so-called helping people to get the political asylum, but nothing has been achieved, you know. So that is why that Rule of Law Foundation, we also must try to attack this fake dissident. And because they have destroyed the people, and then they they destroyed the hope of these people because they were talking about helping, but they were not really helping. So that is why that we established the Rule of Law Foundation. We need to do a lot of work in Flushing or the Chinatown. We need to actually discover the fake dissidents. Perhaps that you don't, you did not know uh, there are so many fake dissidents. Now that may be that. Can you tell me what you think about this a fake dissident? I think w th this is very important. I think uh, it says in the New Testament. I think it's uh, it's uh, Jesus Christ says by by their work. It's in Gospel of Matthew. By their works ye shall know them. So I think you have to look at results. You have to look at action. I mean, one of the, one of the powers of of, uh, of Miles and others in Miles' situation is that they're very financially sophisticated and can actually look at complicated situations, help to take that apart and make connections. That, I think, is one of the most powerful things of the Rural Law Fund is that we're actually going about this in a very different, different way. Uh, this is now trying to connect, you know, the elites in the United States that have been actually in partnership with CCP and to expose that and to use the media to expose that in the investiga investigative apparatus of which you saw Karen uh, last summer actually become a, a big part of this in this H&A investigation that took place in France, took place in the United States, took place in China. I mean, it, it really w it was it went worldwide and in, in to connect that. Uh, one of the things about the dissident groups you always have to, and this happens in the United States all the time, when, when something happens or you have some conservative cause or some uh, religious, particularly in the re re religious right, people are raising money and people are out there trying to get money to put to use to it, you know, uh, some of these groups do great work and some of these groups do less great work. I think it's incumbent upon one of the things here in the United States. Uh, we're about personal liberty and personal responsibility, and so it's your responsibility if you give the money to make sure people, you hold people accountable for what's been done. But yes, I, 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 could, I would definitely say that like in any endeavor, there's been groups that have come up and raised money and maybe haven't had that impact. And that all that gets to do is to show people in the government maybe you don't have that much, you know, you don't really have the stroke, you don't really can't, you don't really have punching power, and then therefore go away and the CCP will win. The other more important thing it does, it'll make the it'll make uh, people kind of despondent, right? That that your your group will start to lose will start to lose uh, their momentum. Is it, a small um, aside to this. Just recently, some people approached me, and I'm helping them out on a private fund to actually build the wall in, in the southern border. And one of the reasons is that they're trying to help President Trump, who's being thwarted every day on actually building a wall. And citizens, just like dissidents in China, citizens came together and said, we want to do our own thing. And I helped them because what it's doing is it's re-energizing people. I think with the rule of law fund, in particular with everybody that's focused on what's going on in China and kind of the suppression, is that to, to look at the work we're doing, to look at the accomplishments we'll have, and one of the things we're trying to do here is get everybody, get the spirit of everybody up that there is something that can be done, people can be held accountable, and that action will be taken, right? And that action is actually, as we've said, ultimately to make sure that this radical cadre of the CCP cannot continue oppressing the people in China. Uh, Mr. Bannon is very clear now that coming up that uh, the overseas uh, dissidents, they have already um, Li Weidong, for example, and uh, He Ping, all these uh, people, you or Hu Ping, these people, they were using uh, the name as a dissident and trying to get donation, but then we are going to discover them. And also some of the uh, fake human rights uh, lawyers, and we need to actually try to discover them. You see, the thing is that um, Washington, D.C. is very big, and that so not for, so that they, 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 
don't really understand exactly what the dissident is about. A lot of the dissident, they have this private hatred. No, you see, they are not really concerning about a nation's uh, um, uh, disaster, such as like Xinjiang people being locked up. So that is why the, uh, Mr. Bannon and us, that we, again, the proof that we need to understand exactly what need to be done. We need to look at uh, HNA. We need to look at uh, Meng Jianzhu, uh, Sun Lijing, and then they are like uh, doing wicked things to young pe young girls. And then we need to discover the Malaysian problem. And then they have stolen the Malaysian's money. And then we need to look at the US that uh, how many people and um, how many technology being stolen by the Chinese CCP, for example, the Boeing's uh, te uh, technology and also the uh, autonomous uh, aircraft. And these, this is all the technology stolen by this uh, one person from China. So all of these things we disclosed online. And then we have the deed, we have the fact, we m prove that to the US. So, but then yet the other uh, dissidents, what did they do? They are talking about, they're talking about that uh, they want donations from people. They want donation because they have cancer or they need to have a divorce and they need to get married. So all of these are for private things that they want to get money. They get want to get donation. And the thing is that they did not actually, they did not tell anyone that they actually understand China has a spy system and they did not have any proper document to support your work. So I think that I think that we need to actually provide protection to the real dissidents and yet that they need to provide evidence so that we need to have action, we need to take we need to have campaign, but we cannot just have those are fake dissidents. Now yesterday, the at the end of our program then he's about to go to another meeting Oh, uh, hi. Dissidents, you have to remember here that the, the CCP is a very, uh, particularly the United Front, it's a very sophisticated operation. You know, some of these dissident groups, there's no doubt, or some of the fake dissident groups, because you have very good dissident groups, you have very good dissidents. I know some of these people personally, they've done hard work, they make very little money, and they're quite dedicated to the freedom of the Chinese people. I believe you're going to find on some of the fake dissidents, what you're going to find is an active involvement by CCP to kind of have false false front operations here that kind of disperse the um, you know the um, the the the, um, the 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 motive and the drive and all that of what we're trying to do it wasn't too long ago and miles you're too humble to bring it up uh, although miles actually does nine costume changes uh, a day in the show he's actually a very humble man um, that um, remember early, remember early on outside of miles's apartment here just a couple blocks away Every day there would be a huge, there would be a huge, almost like a riot <laughs> of, of, of China, and they were all paid by CCP. Remember, we had the photographs who the CCP guys were. So it's a very sophisticated operation. And one of the things it's trying to do is it's trying to uh, dissipate the strength of really kind of the dissidents, the true dissidents' voices here in the United States to get people to focus on exactly what the problems are. I just want to reiterate once again, the level of scandals, of financial scandals, of from Huawei to H and A to Anbon Insurance Company to all of these, all of this, and, and this spy network that's in the United States, and quite frankly, has Americans involved in it. Higginbotham's a perfect example. I think Higginbotham's the first of many that come out of this. The depth of this and the money. Remember, Higginbotham is seventy million dollars. Now, if you go back, and I did this the other night quickly, if you go back and look at what the Russians did basically with certain you know people in the navy and the uniformed services and the cia they were paying nickels and dimes right 70 million dollars boggles people's minds that they basically went through and paid one guy essentially so i think as that as as we peel the layers back on that and people see that that they're going to be more and more shocked about the depth and sophistication of this i think clearly part of this is false media narratives coming out about uh, you know some of these dissident groups and that's something we'll, we'll certainly take a look at remember that the objective here is to get to the truth the truth is very powerful the truth will set you free here so that's where we talked about the special status in other countries or uh, political asylum you can get here the central basic part of all of this is the actions taken on these investigations and that all comes from the whistleblowers from people who have information the ability to put facts forward that cannot be argued about 
not just get you going in the civil rule of law situation here, but eventually we'll be able to potentially uh, get uh, government officials involved and actually lead to, uh, to criminal endeavors. Mr. Bannon uh, explained very clearly, particularly great. Now, in China, uh, a lot of overseas dissidents, they were bought by the CCP. That is why that uh, the uh, Miles calls uh, broadcasting. The goal is to tell people what happened. Now, that uh, if you don't agree and don't support uh, Miles' score, then in that case, that shows that you are really bought by the CCP. And then if you are if you are insulting the Miles' score, then obviously that you are definitely uh, 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 the, uh, being bought by the CCP. In fact, that, that you there is this guy that he was calling me name all the time, and then he is he is definitely bought by the Wang Qishan and then the, uh, Meng Jianzhu because that they, he even got the, the U.S. passport, and then we definitely need to investigate him, and uh, we need to excavate all these um, uh, fake dissidents that who got the U.S. passport, and yet they are the the spy of for the CCP and then destroying a lot of the real dissident. And in fact, some people actually protest outside my apartment and saying, calling me a rapist and all that. Now the, and uh, and then tell me to get out of the U.S. because you uh, because uh, Mao Zedong destroying and damaging and harming my leader of the country. And that is how ridiculous. Now that if you are holding the American passport, you your president Donald Trump. Note something that. You had a lot more of that. I mean, for people here in New York City, it got to be a big deal. I mean, every day, Miles Quark's apartment outside, we have a beautiful uh, square dedicated to General Sherman, who was one of the great uh, generals of the Civil War. It's actually uh, painted in gold, right? So it's one of the big tourist attractions. Literally every day, you couldn't get to General Sherman's monument because of the, because of the protest against Miles Quark. You notice that ended around the time that this information on h and started to come out. There's a direct correlation. <laughs> There's a correlation between the power of facts, right, and, and what was going on. Clearly, the demonstrations against Miles were all funded and instigated by the CCP, right, to try to, you know, get Miles Stone out of the country, to shut Miles up. But it shouldn't be lost in you. As soon as the details of H and A started to come out, all of a sudden you didn't see any, you didn't see any protesters. <laughs> they they realized that was a failed strategy. So the the point is is that even someone like Miles Kwok that is in a different financial situation than most people watching this broadcast or most people that can follow it in in mainland China, um, even with Miles, the laying out of facts that were irrefutable all of a sudden got even the CCP to back off a bit on the public demonstrations of what they were trying to do with some of these fake dissident groups. Uh, that's going to be very important going forward. Remember, it's all about the investigations. It's all about the facts. The more facts we have, the more fruitful investigations we have, the more actions we can take, that will build one upon the, uh, one upon the other. And I think really start to, um, start to really help drive the, this real true freedom movement uh, in China. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Bannon uh, uh, said a lot, and, and I'm going to, uh, we have another question. Uh, in fact, last night, that, um, in fact, that, that Mr. Bannon was very busy. He went uh, away for meetings yesterday. Now, but the thing is that I need to talk to him. I, tell, I must tell him that I read three different, important books. One is the book from uh, Washington. Um, I love political books. I I wish that Mr. Bannon can become the modern Washington that because he is a creator of the Common People's Campaign. Because at the time that it was a monarch and then um, Washington gave up the, the, the his own uh, you know, position and then built this uh, People's Republic in the United States. And that is why that uh, every time that I went to the uh, Central Park, um, I would actually pay my respect to that uh, statue in the Central Park of uh, Washington. And uh, in fact, that that he, at the time that at the time that the Washington actually uh, give all the power back to the public. Uh, that is why that I respected him. And then the other one, uh, in and and then the th the third one I respected. 
was the great financier and that his family had a lot of the connection with my family. And yesterday, that, that this person actually came to my apartment for dinner and with his wife. And this person actually very relevant to my uh, year of growing up. I can't tell you his name. But I asked him, that, that can we actually have a dinner together with Mr. Bannon? And then uh, the, he said to me, oh, yes, I must talk to Mr. Bannon. I love Mr. Bannon. And this person, of this friend of mine is 89 years old. And, um, and then the, he said to me that he wanted to talk to Mr. Bannon about the populist uh, campaign, or common people's campaign, and try America cannot continue this way. So that the last night, however, that Mr. Bannon cannot attend, and then and yet, and then that he talked to me, so that the, that that my friend talked to me about his uh, experience. I'm going to tell you some of the information later on. And then last year, he said to me that something happened to him at home. He his um George, his uh, um, son-in-law, and then also that there was a council uh, talked to him about that wanted to buy his uh, financial license, his business license, and then he's on be that, that the council is actually on behalf of the H and A, you know. And the thing is that, and then, and then the the council actually said that money is not a problem, you know. What if you're willing to buy? Then if you're willing to sell, we can buy. And then he said, I don't understand H and A, but the council on behalf of H and A is lobbying him selling, and then also they're telling a lot of good things about H and A. So, but then this friend of mine, uh, uh, and then and then uh, finally got to meet uh, Chen Feng and and. And then also the Chen Feng and then his family is talking about the, uh, uh, talk, talking to him. And then they wanted to buy his financial license and the business and also buying, buy, buying the house of this guy and then also the antique. And then also the antique, you know, that a lot, a lot of the Chinese antique, I can tell you that they sold to three people. One is myself, one is a French family, and then also the other family who bought a lot of the, and then the, uh, the, the, uh, the other is the, the other buyer of a Chinese antique is my friend. And then he, in fact, that uh, he is the founder of uh, Edison, Thomas Edison's, uh, 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 founder. And then in fact that he, the thing is that, that he bought a lot of Chinese antique and then antique did not, and then Shen Feng wanted to buy his antique as well. But then my friend, my friend rejected it. And then in fact that my friend, and then, and then Chen Feng did not just want to buy antique and the house. In fact, that he said that I want to buy all of your uh, books. And then, and then he 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 said that. And then he. And then he got the my friend out of out into the car, and then. And then he said that I can give you all this money. And then he showed the money in the boot of the car. And then to my friend, you know, the thing is that, so the thing is that this is actually, this is actually a, a great uh, thing because that my friend is very wealthy. But the thing is that my friend was sure that, you know, Chen Feng would show him all this money at the boot of the car, you know. And then so several like uh, tens of uh, millions and billions of uh, dollars, you know. And then so the thing is that, the thing is that I just wanted to tell, I just wanted to tell Mr. Bannon that uh, my friend wanted to meet him. And uh, my friend actually wanted to talk to me about H and A, and wanted to talk to him about the H and A. And uh, do you know? And then, and then also that, that I can tell, I can tell him, my friend, that you know the council that who was actually helping H and A, and then he killed himself. But then the council before he died that he actually helped H and A to fabricate a lot of uh, documents. And the, the thing is that, and uh, I can tell my friend, I my my I told my friend that I knew about this incident. That you know the council who held H and A had to kill himself in a car park. You know, the thing is that, uh, oh, some messages, okay, okay, so. Wow. The, 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 we've hooked up a link of that, so all of America, what, all of America is now watching this. Uh, movement. One woman. <laughs> uh, I know that uh, Mr. Trump is watching me. I know that. 
and then perhaps I can't tell you yet, you know, a lot of a secret here. Uh, uh, so anything, everything is just a beginning, uh, a lot of secrets. You, 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 uh, I, must have, I must tell you a lot of secret later on. Now, the thing is that, uh, in fact, that uh, Mr. Bannon, you need to know about this. You see this council that who killed himself, right? And and then they were t saying that, that this 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 uh, council who were helping Asia and A kill killed himself by taking selfie again. You know, he, do you know how d ridiculous it is? So, but the thing is that he's killed by or forced to kill himself by the Asia and A. So you can imagine how what how how how. D uh, d uh, uh, abominable, uh, ab uh, diabolical that the H and A is. Now that you know, they wanted to actually buy, and then buy my friend's financial business, and definitely H and A is representing Wang Qishan. And, and then in fact that, in fact that my friend had already discovered some problem with the uh, with that transaction. And then they, they actually, so horrible, then they were saying that, oh, I buy your business, I buy your house, I buy your antique, I buy your everything. And so last night I was uh, having dinner with my friend and my friend told me a lot of a story. He was 89 years old. And then the, my friend asked me, so Miles, you and Bannon definitely going to take down the CCP? And I must talk, I must, uh, talk to Mr. Bannon. I must, and maybe be the 2019 is too soon. And then I said that you are 89 years old. You can't wait for another year, 10 years, and another 10 years. You're probably not going to be here to see my uh, achievement. So that is why that I said that if you have want to make donation that you are your antique you are going to make that donation to Mr. Bannon, the Rule of Law Foundation. So actually that tomorrow I supposed to go to his friend. And then uh, my, uh, I go to my friend's home. You know that a lot of antique there, you know, a lot of antiques. And then he said that I definitely considered to make donation to the Rule of Law Foundation, but I must work together with you. Really and uh, to uh, under to think about how to actually take down the uh, CCP is un inconceivable, right? Now that my friend has another friend called Rothschild. This is this is the power, I think, of of, of what you accomplished mm -hmm. so far, and what potentially the rule of law fund could do. I, on the H and A situation, the largest financial company in the world, when uh, the the chairman CEO dies, it's 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 a short story in the world's media. Right in in French papers and American papers is like that long, right? That he fell, he died uh, suddenly in France taking uh -huh. a selfie, and it was our colleague here, uh, Miss Karen, in the investigative team. When you guys went right away, you understood in talking to the French people by going out into the field and talking to the little guy, not to the high authorities, but to the little guy that said, "There's no chance. <laughs> that's not. It, there was a total lie." Just exposing that lie in and of itself blew this entire thing up, right? Because you see, once you send somebody out there and you saw it and did those great videos that you saw right away how ridiculous this was, right? And also, how could mainstream media, how could the powerful media in France, in the United States, and in London all believe what was obviously a lie that the investigators went there and all the people in the little village knew was a lie? and how people didn't want to talk to us. That's exactly, have been suppressed. That's the power, I think, when you talk about this with your friend, is that, hey, we've got the ability to actually expose the lies. Yes, is very correct. <laughs> uh, Rochao, uh, he, 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 uh, in fact, Rochao invested a lot in China. He's my good friend and then you know QQ Tencent and Alibaba and uh, uh, BYB David Rothschild yes yeah, the grandson the grandson, the grandson. Uh, grandson. also Jacob yeah. Jacob and Jacob as well and Jacob green investment yeah. uh. yes 
uh, they they know you. They all know you, and uh, they all know that you're anti-CCP. So they all know you. And yesterday, when we talking about H and A, and then also the investigation of uh, uh, Wang Jian, it was great. And then also that your 1120 conference. Now that everyone in the West understand, in fact, that they are saying that they worry about their friend, their friend and their family, their investment in China. So the thing is that that's great that we actually expose the CCP, and uh, you know. And then, and then, so that now, now that uh, we expose the possible, the the, the thing, the, the 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 kind of uh, uh, the the thing that happened to Wang Jian, and uh, we still have a lot of evidence that we are not showing yet. You know, the thing is that so we Karen went to France for the investigation. We talked to the police, but the thing is that police told us that we c they they don't want to talk to us. They talked to us, but then the thing is that they told us not to expose that, that uh, n n expose them. So we respect the police. So that is why that we did not show them. But the thing is that now Karen. He went. She went to France for the investigation. She knew very clearly that uh, Wang Jian was not actually uh, died by selfie, but then she she killed himself. What do you think about that? Can you tell us your impression? Where is Wang? Hide coming now. What is this? Uh, okay, no question. Uh, Karen, you can tell us. What do you think about that? What you found? Um, I think it's uh, incredible for myself. I was not a policeman, right? We, you all know that I'm not a police. And, but it's clearly, last year we went to France. We went several times. From day one, at the beginning, I knew exactly what happened there. In fact, that you don't even need to be an expert, even though that we are professionals, except me. We don't even need to have a uh, professional. Then you realize what happened, really. You know, the, the war was just a small war and a short war. A person, this, this wealthy person, and this uh, a powerful man, and then he's a chairman of a Chinese organization, and yet selfie died by selfie is inconceivable. But what is so difficult to understand is that there are so many people around, and yet nobody talk, nobody dare to talk or raise a voice, and that is so um, you know um, f s uh, incredible to us. We talk to the police, and then we talk to so many people. A lot of people told us that uh, we. We, we, we know somebody is controlling us and that we feel like this is, I think this, this, the, 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 that is not what happened. We know what happened, but we dare not to say it. So it is a small village. And then the thing is that, and then so this guy is so rich and so wealthy. And then why would he go to such a small village to take a photograph and die? So it's uh, obviously he cannot be selfie. He has his own team. His team would take photograph for him. And also it's such a small village and uh, everyone around was just elderly. And, and yet something like that happened. And he, he, he was uh, claimed to jump on the wall, take selfie, die by selfie. You can think yourself, right? Yes. Uh, what Karen said is, is exactly it. Cannot be take, die by selfie. And then, the, uh, you know, the Wang Qishan and those, uh, they, they, they were saying that die by selfie. But then, of course, that even now that everybody is uh, recognized the fact that it's not die by selfie. And then they can't be, and then they can't be, uh, you know, sprinting three times and jumping on a short wall and then die by selfie. You know, how can that be possible? And then nobody can really sprint and then jump up to the sh uh, small short wall, right? And he is the only one person there. There's supposed to be six people, and then or like uh, ten people supposed to uh, supposed to be surrounding him. In fact, 
in fact, all these conflicting information show that what we were disclosed, what we disclosed was real, and he cannot be died by self. He cannot be committed suicide. And Wang Jian, we have known a lot of information about uh, Wang Jian. We have a lot of shocking information. We are going to uh, will broadcast, but not yet. But in fact, that we may have a new conference, um, press conference uh, concerning Wang Qishan, Chen Feng, and uh, Long, Liu Chengjian, and also the concerning Yang Guang, the chairman, and then also that the uh, and concerning the two French uh, v Vial Vial. Uh, uh, we concerning Vial and Sylvie as well, and also Hua Bing, and uh, we can tell you Wang Jian's business is definitely going to be disclosed. The, the truth will be discovered. And um, so we need to prove that the ridiculous uh, way that the CCP uh, is doing things and then how they can actually openly and kill people. And then the Wang Jian incident is definitely going to help me to prove that. Now, Sarah, your question. Uh, uh, can I make some addition? Uh, yeah. Uh, H&A is the greatest uh, business in China. Imagine CEO of Apple died. A lot of media is going to report on him, right? For example, Tim Cook or someone, that they die. Uh, 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 okay, uh, Sarah is asking question now. I'm sorry that the voice is overlapping, okay? And, and Sarah asking question to Mr. Bannon, we know that the Wang Qishan is a bad guy, big bad wolf. Now, but I want to mention Sun Li Jing, Meng Jianzhu as well, because they for because they want to repatriate Mao's Guo, they exercise a BGY action in the US, particularly now that they they are trying to uh, they are trying to persecute the people that who help uh, with the uh, mouse squad in the expose. So, Mr. Bannon, Rule of Law Foundation, can you take any specific action that can uh, pursuing the uh, the crime that committed by Meng Jianzhu and Sun Li Jun? The, the crime committed by Sun Sun Li Jun, Meng Jianzhu. Right. Any any. I think specifically what we have to do, Miles is already into the into the um, counter stage in the suit about requiring uh, discovery. Uh, like I said, this is all about action. I think the action is going to come through the court system of getting this information of the financial institutions and the people who are involved. The H&A investigations at the very beginning, th that's going to have many, many layers to it and expose a lot. And so, yes, the, 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 it's incumbent upon us, uh, Miles' investigative apparatus, the rule of law fund, to continue on with that, and then eventually, I think that uh, that uh, the, the the authorities will, will get involved. But we have to start to to find out what exactly went on, and part of that's the countersuit with with Miles. All of these things are kind of meticulous. You have to get the details. You have to have the facts. So they're just looking for you to get one fact wrong to kind of throw the whole thing out. So um, I believe that people will be brought to justice and will be heard. I don't for a second believe the official story, which is that he died taking a selfie. I just don't, I, I've seen the facts of what Karen and the investigative team have brought back. I've talked to the people in France that came back here. I think there's zero chance that he just fell by taking a selfie. That in and of itself is a lie, right? And that's the central lie. I think also we have to find out the involvement of the Interpol, uh, the Chinese official at Interpol uh, that then went missing. So I think there's many, many levels of this that have to be uh, investigated, Sarah, but I do believe that as we go forward, you're going to start to see eventually official action getting to be taken because I think it's just too big. It's too big a scandal. I think Mr. Bannon is uh, talking about Meng Jianzhu and Xun Li Jun and uh, and also their persecution to uh, the friends that who help us, right? Now, um, we, in fact, uh, Sarah and Luda need to collect more relevant information. Rural Law Foundation in the U.S. could make a lot of discoveries and uh, can Im 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 deploy a lot of the um, dis uh, investigations. And then perhaps uh, maybe we could actually make use of RICO Act to 
uh, prosecute those people. Perhaps that uh, the warrior friends and also Luda and uh, Sarah, perhaps that you can make also more investigation and also broadcast more talking about talking to the people and then uh, telling people about the truth and then also telling, uh, giving us the information and then we can use those. Now, in fact, that after my uh, discourse, we're going to have five minutes of uh, a break. Uh, Back to the thing about persecution of people coming forward. I think one of the realities we have to understand, and I think this is what it talks about the bravery of people in mainland China that are coming with this information, plus the people who have been oppressed, but Mr. Luda, uh, Sarah, other voices out there that are part of this new media apparatus, clearly the persecution is going to continue on of you. The only way we're going to stop the persecution is to make these stories so big, like the Khashoggi story. You have to make these stories so big that uh, the media has to deal with it. Once the media starts dealing with it, the American people get involved and, and they will take our side. There's no doubt about that. But I think that one thing we have to be very cognizant of, whether it's Miles Kwok or whether it's Sarah Chu or Mr. Luder or all the others voices out there that are in this kind of new media promoting this, there's an incredible amount of persecution of, of you and, and, and that will just continue on. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing for keeps here. The, the CCP understands that their biggest enemy is the truth. The more you talk about facts, the more you talk about truth, they just can't continue to deny it. And so what they have to do is to destroy the truth tellers, whether that's extraditing Miles Kwok back to uh, mainland China or whether it's suppressing the voices of you and Mr. Luda. So you, you will, uh, this persecution, I think we have to be realistic. It's just not going to... It's not going to stop until you're victorious. Uh, uh, Mr. Bannon, uh, you think it's already very, uh, you have already answered, but then Ms. Sarah is very important that we need to disseminate what has been said. We need to openly talk about this. And then the, the rule of law submission is very important because we need to help people, rescue people, protect people. And uh, NTCCP, it is definitely important. And uh, we, um, for example, like uh, we need to work hard and then we need to be the second Venezuela. And uh, we need to, while that there is a uh, riot, while there is uh, confusion, we need to do a lot of uh, preparation, preparatory work to support the people. So, for example, supporting the military, the police and the family, because, you know, we understand that in China, that we know that the military, the police, a lot of people are good people. They were not persecuting. But the thing is that they need to trust us. They need to, we need to n tell them that we will protect them, protect the family so that they are willing to join us, you know. So we are capable of doing that. We need to let them uh, morally and uh, trusting us and then legally trusting us. And then the rule of law foundation is under the protection of the legal system in the U.S. so that we, all of our documents are bi legally binding. And that w but they, because they are real and they are factual. So that is why that you, we are morally, uh, um, uh, obeying the rule of law in the U.S. and so that you, we we need to, so that we are not going to, so we, are, so I feel like that we are encouraging the military people trusting us working with us. You see, Venezuela, there is no army helping them, right? But the thing is that in the U in the China, if the army is standing with us, then there is no, no way the CCP can, con uh, the country can continue. So the thing is that in China, that the, is either the people were being bought or be being suppressed. We need, to liber uh, we need to liberate the people who are being suppressed and being bought. You know, if we can actually, we are not against the Chinese people. We are not even against the 90 million of the CCP, we only need to take down those several cadre. And uh, so release those power and return those power to the people. Okay, that is our mission. So now we're going to have five minutes uh, break. And uh, uh, Luda's question and Sarah's question, very good. But then our, our video and the, the audio system today is not so good. And then so that we have great people and yet the, our audio system need to be improved. And uh, I apologize to Luda and Sarah. So now that we have five minutes break, okay? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh.
你问他能给人家基金做啥呀Okay. Okay. Action. Action. Mr. Bannon, can you hear me? Real action now. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. 亲爱的战友们, uh, my dear comrade and arms, uh, again, we return. Uh, Mr. Bannon said that my uh, Chinese uh, costume looked very good. But the thing is that uh, because I am not as handsome as him, so I have to actually gain upper hand by wearing different clothes. Now, and Mr. Luda and uh, Miss Sarah. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, miles away since I don't wear a tie. Right. I, I, wear, I wear three shirts and no tie. I've been trying to convince Miles to go to the Chinese version of my style. And I just want to say, Miles, I'm so happy that you've now gotten the Chinese version of the Bannon style, a couple of shirts and more traditional garb, no tie, no, tie. no Western, no Western. Uh, that's what the elites use to, to, to confine us, right? So we thrown off the tie. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bannon, uh, he is such a pure and childlike, and we can feel that in our life. 
And in fact, I have worked with a lot of uh, uh, Western people, and yet the Mr. Bannon is the elite amongst the elite. It is not just that he boasted it himself. It's because I can see that how observant that he is, and he has such a great vision. But of course, there are a lot of questions need to be resol resolved. Now, uh, Mr. Bannon has a lot of uh, uh, view about that. Now, but the, anyway, we are not going to uh, broadcast uh, Luda and Sarah. Now, I am going to ask Miss Karen, our beautiful Karen, um, answer some questions. A lot of people asking her question. Now, Karen, you know, a lot of messages asking you questions. Last time in the program, I was saying that you, your view on love and family and on the world, and a lot of people want to hear more from you, uh, particularly that uh, we, we were chatting and uh, you uh, got married and you were happy and then your husband and then you, 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 you love your husband, you said. And so how can you prove that you love your husband very much? I said, well, because I, 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 I have many uh, love affairs before. I said, how many times? Yes. And then I said, so, so what, with, what, with what kind of people you have fell in love? He said, she said that, oh, yes, I have, uh, I have many uh, love affairs. And then so my husband now is the best. So, I, so you know the best. And then I said, how many of you that, that you have a dated? I, she said, a hundred. Now, of course, I was just saying that. I was, I, I was, I was heart beating. Uh, my, my, my heart beat her so hard at the time that I, I heard that she had the best, you know. And, uh, but then because a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, Chinese people, they, were, they remained to be virgin until, until that they got married, you know, because they want to be pure. But then after, after they got married, although they have a lot of affairs, but then, the, but then the thing is that my, uh, Karen, she said that she, she actually tried to have a lot of a love affair, have a lot of uh, uh, experience, and then she found the best and she engaged into this uh, wonderful uh, marriage life. So, that, uh, so Karen, tell me, so that you have uh, so many affair and then, and then find the perfect husband, T can you give us some advice? Uh, well, I... I am watching your program, and I find that embarrassing. This question is so embarrassing. Now that I, I, no, it's like this. Now, he is a God. I'm more Catholic. Karen is very religious. You should know she's very religious. But right? I'm more Catholic than my family. Ah, ah, I, I am not so much Catholic as my family. Ah, ah, I am more Catholic than my family. Ah, ah, I am more Catholic in fact, that I have uh, talked to my friends a lot. Um, basically, in China, a, a lot of uh, people ask me advice in China. Uh, a, a lot of uh, parents in China, they demand a lot to, their par to the children when they were young. Two-year-old kid, they must learn all the Chinese characters and write, uh, they can write and read Chinese character when they were two years old. It's so impossible. You see, I think that each age would have their development stage, right? And they have different steps of growth. So I think that children should be allowed to be children and you shouldn't give them set that kind of a demand, you know? And so, but then yet China parents in China and then a lot of my friends told me that they they had to learn they had to start to learn when they were young they were child they were not ch children and they were five year old going to primary school and then uh, since primary school that they have to spend 10 hours at school and then at home they have to go do homework and then so high school is even worse if the whole life is about test now, they cannot have girlfriends and boyfriends, so all of their time was engaged in studying. And uh, everyone said that in China. After university, and then you have to go to good universities, you know, um, you, 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 if, if you can't go to secondary university, you have to go to the best university. And then also you need to study and then you need to graduate. After, and then you, you need to graduate the first time and, you know, and then, and then after that, that you go to postgraduate and then PhD. 
and then you need to get married immediately. So in that case, how can you get married? Where, where would you have time to get to know girlfriends or boyfriends or engage into any love affairs? And then after you get married, that you must produce children immediately. My friends are following this path like that. Now, my girlfriends, I have a, I have a girlfriend, and she told me that, do you know, every weekend, it, I... And uh, she said that uh, she said that uh, she met two hundred men in one year. She because she wanted to get married, and then uh, and then after she got married, and then I said that. So she introduced uh, she introduced her boyfriend to me, actually not husband. Okay, and then the and the, and then the, she said to me that her 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 boyfriend is very ugly. But then I said, "How can you tell him that he's ugly, and then yet you you want him as girl a uh, boyfriend?" She she said, "That's my family introducing him to me, and all my friends are like that." And then they she so so unhappy when she got married because that is not a boyfriend that she wanted herself introduced to her by her family. So so that is why I said to you that I have free. Uh, affairs. I have. I get to know my uh, boyfriend, myself, and my husband. I chose for my uh, husband, and no one tell me what to do. And so we have uh, such a better life. So of course, I think that you need to. My advice is that you need to play. You need to work. You need to have family. Yes, but you do it for yourself. You decide for yourself. You decide um, when to have children, when to get married, when whether you want to study. Whether what's What things that you need to study? You see, so you you need to create your own life, and and uh, but I think that Chinese people had a lot of a pressure. You need to ha enjoy life. Otherwise, I just think that it's worth it to live. Uh, it is really what happened in China. It is actually very relevant to the ruling of the CCP. Now CCP, and uh, they educate people. They have destroyed humanity. Even when children were little, they were teaching children to be strengthen their hatred, and then to be to to strengthen um, their power. And then they were the children were taught to speak differently in front of people and behind people. And then children would talk not to be. Truthful, because uh, the, so that is why that when you grow up, you for climbing up the social ladder, for climbing up the political ladder, you can sleep with anyone and you can lie about anything, and so that is why that you know nowadays there were political people that who had the like mistresses over a hundred of them, and then even the female politician they will sleep with whoever, you know. So that is why that there is no. Moral anymore now, and then Karen is talking to us about her view. But I am talking about the political system. This political system destroy humanity. Then they destroy the chance to be falling in love, you know. And then you know, of course, that the Karen must have tried different men, and then she found the best to be her husband. Now, but the thing is that in China, it's not like that. In China, you study because you want to be gov in the government, and you, you when you're in government, you have the supreme power so that. You can rape people, exploit people, so that you are suppressing humanity and moral uh, morale. So that is why that in China nobody is happy. No one can grow up happily. You cannot have a healthy family, and if you don't have a healthy life, how can you have a healthy future? Now that is why that is so wicked of the CCP, and then they destroy faith in people as well. Now I'm. I I'm telling you that uh, when I'm talking about that she is, has a hundred affairs, that is wrong. Of course, it's just uh, me who's saying that she's very pure, and then she's a Catholic, and then she is very conservative, and uh, she is uh, keeping her own faith and keeping her own innocence. And uh, if a, a people does not have faith, and there is no health, and there is no love, and uh, so they can have all kind of a Bad behavior. So that is why that Karen is a person that I respect her, and she's very pure and she's devout. Now, Mr. Bannon, your turn. What about your personal life? And you have a very colorful、uh, personal life. You have many wives, right? And、uh, so, 
now that in fact I want to talk to you about that but then you know her, his ex-wife is very uh, 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 he, I, I know that there are girls very beautiful but then what about you as a Catholic what is your view on love and the beautiful women what is your view on beautiful women and then and then the, your uh, love life and then what do you think about the CCP's uh, thing in here well, I work, uh, I, I pride myself on, uh, because of the things I work on, I work, as Miles knows, seven days a week, 20 hour, or 18 hours a day, so I, I, I don't have any time for any uh, social life, which is fine. Uh, I'm very focused on the, on, on the work ahead, and that's where I get my enjoyment. I think one of the, the key things you just brought up about the family and how important the family is in China, in the United States, remember, the CCP, and particularly these radical, radical cadres, number one thing they want to do is break the family unit apart, right, so that you're dependent upon them. You're dependent upon them for advancement. You're dependent upon them for your livelihood. You're dependent upon them uh, for basically everything. And I think that goes against the grain of so much of Chinese history, culture, and society because the family's always been the central, the central unit uh, of the family. Now, you do get into this tension in the modern world of, you know, the traditional uh, marriages being arranged by the families or the families, the elders in the family pick who they think should be the, 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 per, the, uh, the more perfect person for you. And of course, the young people are rebelling at that. I think it's one of the things about, particularly in the United States, when I see Chinese people come here to the United States and I see them thrive and I see them flourish, right? It's, it's it, this, this American revolution, which was about uh, uh, individual responsibility right, individual liberty, right, the ability to, to be in a, in, a, in a civil society but have a certain amount of freedoms and you have to put your own restraints on yourself. Everything is not just about the collective part of society, but you have to put your own restraints upon yourself. You've seen so many Chinese come over here uh, to the West and, and be enormously successful. So I think that's something that will be worked out, you know, over the next uh, decades or hundreds of years. But the CCP, and I think this, is, Miles, is one of the reasons you know, I talked a lot about there's a complete lockdown on any discussion of the Cultural Revolution because in the Cultural Revolution, that's really where the CCP and certain radical cadres of the CCP really try to go to the, the core of the Chinese family and try to destroy the, uh, the Chinese family. So it's, uh, it's, it's, to me, it's fascinating to see what I call old hundred names. They continue to kind of go through life, and as many times as they try to get destroyed, they kind of they kind of uh, push on, and it's, it's, I think, the centerpiece of, uh, of Chinese society. But no, for my personal life, it's uh, the, uh, I'd rather broadcast here than, 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 than <laughs> as Miles knows, I don't drink. I, 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 the, the only problem I have, I don't smoke. The only thing is, is that I was supposed to lose weight. Of course, Miles is, uh, meals he serves here at the broadcast to uh, make sure that I'm not going to, I'm going to lose the bet. So, uh, <laughs> so no, but that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the, the thing of my personal life. <laughs> Mr. Bannon, very good. And he's exactly like that. What you see in him is what you get in him. Very, very genuine. But the thing is that he won't evade. And uh, so you can see that uh, when he is standing in front of people speaking, he is a philosopher, a strategist, and he's a campaigner. He's a genius, a great man. And But then in real life, he is very down to earth. And it is very honest. And But then he's so real, so so genuine. And then sometimes that, uh, you know, talking love is, uh, is an art you cannot be so real so truthful you know and then if you are so truthful sometimes that uh, you may not be able to speak in some sweet talk to people so now a lot of people leaving me message including Taiwan uh, friends from Taiwan they care about uh, Mr. Bannon's care as uh, health I told Mr. Bannon that you need to reduce 35 pounds you know you reduce weight lose some weight then that he said he reduced 15 uh, pounds and he was already very nervous because he only got uh, 15 pounds lost and then he, he but then the, so anyway he worried about his losing his bed but the thing is that I want I want him I want him to be healthy so I want him to lose some weight now but Taiwan people care about Mr. Bannon also now 
a lot of people, millions of people from Taiwan, friends from Taiwan, care about you because they know that um, you are going to be helpful to Taiwan. You're going to tell people in the West about Taiwan. Now, because uh, uh, Mr. Bannon, you have been a soldier, you've been stationed in uh, South Sea and the uh, Taiwan Strait, and so that also that you you probably you understand the intelligence work and you understand Taiwan. So that is why that we all want you to be healthy, and that because you are the future. Of Taiwan now, and then also that we all wish Tai uh, Mr. Bannon to care about Taiwan uh, it's, uh, a connection with mainland China, because a lot of a CCP definitely going to attack Taiwan. I hear a lot of a people from mainland China told me that the CCP is supportive of. Uh, attacking Taiwan. In fact, Wang Qishan encouraged uh, Xi Jinping is going to attack Taiwan, may, perhaps maybe in 10 years' time. So Wang Qishan, Meng Jianzhu, they are uh, their thought and their view about the, um, the Taiwan situation. In fact, uh, to me, I understand a lot of uh, leaders in the military because they want to distract people's mind and they want to distract people uh, as a uh, uh, focal, focal point. They, that is why that they want to attack Taiwan to so that people would not be looking so much about their one bell, one row and the financial situation. So let me ask Mr. Bannon about another question. CCP, if in the recent years, now, uh, because uh, China cannot resolve their financial crisis with the U.S., and then they cannot experience any structural reform in China. So they are going to attack Taiwan to distract people's mind. So, so what can Taiwan people do? What should Taiwan people do? And what U.S. will do? Will U.S. protect Taiwan? Can Mr. Bannon give us an answer? Uh, y yes, I think this is, goes back to President Trump's um State of the Union the other night where he said uh, that the deals that they're working on right now with the Chinese, and as you know, they're going to be this big, very big meeting in, um, in uh, 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 Vietnam at the end of February, beginning of March. Which first, there'll be a meeting with the South Koreans, and then there'll be a meeting with President, uh, President Trump will go to Beijing, I think, and meet with President Xi. Uh, that the, the United States is going to demand structural reforms. There's going to be some sort of structural reforms that are going to be um, uh, part of this. And um, the, um, th that's, that's a key part of this. I think in a lot of respects, this may actually just continue on, um, you know, the, some of the financial pressure on China. You know, I have said for a long time, and a lot of people have said for a long time that uh, as, you know, the uh, regime has more and more financial problems, as the regime has more and more social control problems, as the regime has as this one belt, one road, and a lot of the money they put overseas doesn't start coming back and they start having more and more financial pressure, I think you're going to see a situation, we call it wag the dog. It's, it's where you, that elites when they're in trouble try to strike out and have some sort of national security or foreign policy crisis. That's where Taiwan comes into play. The one thing, Miles, I, I would slightly disagree with um, some of the assessment you've seen from China. I think this happens a lot quicker than 10 years. I think that the Taiwan situation is something that uh, could happen in the next, you know, three to five years. Uh, I said actually on my radio show back in 2000, in, uh, in I think it was 14 or 15, that I thought the United States might be in some sort of conflict with the CCP in the South China Sea within five years. I think Taiwan's now actually taken that uh, and actually a, a, a bigger problem. And one of the reasons is I think that the CCP looks at that as a way to galvanize the Chinese people uh, and, and to start beating the war toxins or the war drums to get people very, uh, you know, set that this is against America, this is against the West, and that's where you got to take back uh, Taiwan. I think that the Taiwanese people, I think the most important thing is to continue and build enthusiasm for an alliance or for, you know, connection with the West, with both Japan, South Korea, the United States, etc. What the world is going to look at is your, not just ability, your desire to keep your freedom. I think that'll be the central thing. I think that's why there's so many um, uh, subterranean uh, situations in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, infiltration situations where CCP is trying to, you know, show that a significant part of the population doesn't want to fight for their freedom. I think that Taiwan uh, will be a beacon of freedom. 
Uh, it has been a beacon of freedom, but the people of the world are going to have to know that. So I think it's a very tough situation for the Taiwan people. Like I said, I spent a lot of time in Taiwan in the 1970s uh, and early 80s uh, and have a great, uh, great appreciation for Taiwan. Uh, and I think that, look, they're in a very tough situation. But as you know, Miles, that's a, that's a chess piece that the, the CCP is going to try to use. And I think the Taiwan people have to show the world, right, that we want our freedom, that we're prepared to do anything to defend our freedom. I think if the Taiwan people show that, that I think the world will unite uh, around them. And, of course, the CCP, uh, when, as soon as they hear that, their heads blow up. So it's, uh, as Miles can tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a very sore point. But I think, once again, the Taiwanese people telling the world that we want our freedom, we want to be, you know, we want to have self-determination uh, will be one of the key things here. Uh Mr. Bannon uh, was very true, very real. The uh, Taiwan, friends from Taiwan, you must understand what he said. Uh, in fact, that one of our friends, um, he is from the defense uh, military, Ministry of Defense, and uh, he also told me that uh, he is a very critical person, and uh, he also told me uh, many information, and he feels that uh, CCP definitely want to attack Taiwan. And if Taiwan was under attack by the, the, the surround, surrounder, uh, sur uh, uh, surroundment of uh, CCP, then Taiwan people must stand up and defend themselves, then U.S. will be behind them. And uh, this general and myself, we will lobby in the U.S. to help Taiwan if Taiwan is under threat by the CCP. And because CCP may try to distract their own financial pressure and so that they would try to attack Taiwan. And then if Taiwan under attack, if Taiwan is resisting, U.S. will stand behind Taiwan to help them. Taiwan, because as the first two days we had already talked about Taiwan, and uh, Mr. Bannon asked, why did we not protect Taiwan? Um, you see, the thing is that there's several thousands of years of our culture, in fact, that uh, it was disrupted and uh, destroyed by the Cultural Revolution that is actually promulgated by the CCP. And it had destroyed our culture. It is important. Now, that the thing is that Mr. Bannon and Ms. Karen, you love China because you love the Chinese culture. And yet such culture was destroyed by the Cultural Revolution, the hooligans that who are, were the members of the CCP, and they destroyed our culture. And it has so become a chasm. It had become a fault line, and it was not to be continued to be known by the people today in China. So, but then yet, Taiwan preserved our culture. So, cult Taiwan had contributed a great deal for China because it has preserved our precious culture and to preserve our human uh, treasure. If CCP attack Taiwan, several tens of millions of people are going to be under attack. And then I think that Taiwan can form the alliance with, uh, with Japan and then even North Korea and Korea. And then so that we would be standing together to resist the CCP's attack. And also if, if the CCP destroy and attack, successfully attack and take over Taiwan, then the Hong Kong will become the next target. And that is really a great danger. So we definitely must resist the attack of CCP's attack in Taiwan. I, we talked, we talked, uh, Mr. Ta Bannon and I talked that we must really lobby for the support of Taiwan. So Mr. Bannon's uh, message is very clear now. Now, uh, other friends are going to ask many questions to Karen. We have friends asking Karen and very interested in Karen. Now, Karen, uh, you stayed in Ta China for uh, many times, and uh, have you met with a China official? And uh, what is your impression of the Chinese of officials? And also, particularly in Ka Nankai University, they have a lot of a, they nurture a lot of a Chinese officials. What is your impression of them? Yes, I have met with many of them. 
In fact, I have uh, many friends, parents, they were Chinese officials. They, they have impact. They have positive impact on me. They were, what I'm, I'm saying is that they're very nice to me. And uh, it's because if you don't look at them from the political uh, light, they are nice people. Like I said, Chinese people are very nice people. <clears throat> I met in China. There was no one I found unpleasant, I found who was bad towards me because Chinese people in their core are good. They have a very strong sense of family. They have um, a very strong sense of connecting, connection, of friendship even. So whatever I would do, they would help. So it doesn't really matter once you're there um, who they are and what kind of job they're doing because towards you, they're good. Now, if you put them back to that environment, it's like, it's like a zoo. It's like if you have animals running free in a jungle, they, they, just, they just do what they're supposed to do. Now, if you put them in a zoo, in a circus, that's where they start changing. Um, and, and, and that's what I found. They were completely different people. If you consider like um, people working in politics, people, um, even police officers, they were completely different people in a work environment where they had to demonstrate something to others and they could not act freely. They could not act um, according to their own will and what they were as individuals. Uh. It's you're so kind, and and uh, so you 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 have not seen Wang Qishan, Meng Jianzhou, and then they were not kind people. Well, I met were not high officials, and they were um, they were ordinary people who even working for the government they really didn't have any connection. Uh. uh so now uh we have a lot of friends asking a question first ask mr bannon mr bannon and uh this is john Wei hong uh he's from wukan wuhan he's from wuhan province uh his wukan village and he was a person being had been persecuted and so he also very young and he came from a, a village and he mentioned that he wants China to have rule of law and uh, to have a democracy. Now yet, now that he is also staying in uh, NYC and he's an Uber driver, he's waiting to be approved of political asylum. Now he asked many questions. I'm going to ask you one. Mr. Bannon, this year, CCP, Uh, had had done a lot of a persecution uh, to those uh, dissidents abroad, and so they cannot even go ab abroad with a visa, and uh, they cannot go to visit the embassies. So, so can they actually uh, go through some of the peripheral countries, such as like Taiwan, Hong Kong, and uh, a Korean embassy? Can they go to seek help from those embassy? So the Rule of Law Foundation can extend their help to those embassy, and then so that uh, so that to help them to get out of the China and get to the U.S. Uh, That's one of the things we're going to try to attempt to, to work on this year. It's going to be obviously very, very, very. Uh, very difficult. The special status is uh, is obviously very controversial. I understand that it's uh, it's a it's a huge problem right now. It's one of the reasons, one of the ways, as Miles and I have talked, the CCP keeps such control over things is that they're able to actually uh, control this and so uh, and and to continue to put to oppress people. Uh, it's obviously something we have to work through. Uh, it's one of our action items 
uh, for 2019. Like I said, I think that we'll get better traction the more investigations we do, the more we bring this up to people's, and it really get into people's conscience that this is a massive problem. Because right now they're not getting the full story. They don't really understand how how desperate the situation is. But I, I agree with you. I think that uh, in both Western Europe, uh, in South America, Canada, uh, in addition to the United States and Australia, that uh, this uh, situation has to be has to be uh, looked at uh, e immediately because this is something that's um, that's uh, these are people that really are being. I think the word you use there, persecuted. Uh, is absolutely correct. It's one of the things that you should also know that it's, I've been bringing up with, with Catholic officials about this whole deal that the Pope is prepared to sign uh, with, um, with, um, with the, the uh, CCP because to your comment, you use the word persecuted. There's, I believe people in China are not just the dissidents abroad, but people in China are being persecuted every day. Clearly they're trying to persecute uh, the dissidents that are overseas and so it is to try to bring to the world's attention that this persecution is going on and it's it's going on in mainland China to the degree it's going on with dissidents that have left China uh, then they have to get uh, somehow to try to get them uh, try to get them asylum or try to get them some sort of protection but it's a uh, it's particularly a, uh, a very 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 difficult situation uh, Mr. Bannon also uh, answer a lot. Now, we have friends asking other questions to Karen. Many people want to ask Karen that, so, according to what Mao said, when you were recruited, uh, you were also recruited by Google and uh, Microsoft, and yet that you denied, you rejected the high-income uh, job and worked for Mao Squad. Why? Why would you want to work for Miles? What exactly is your uh, purpose and your goal? And why you choose a job? You, you have many reasons to choose a job. You can do it for money. You can do it because it's close to home. You can do it because it's convenient, comfortable. Or you can do it because you have um, a certain series of ideals um, that uh, you believe in and you want to work in that direction. Now, um, we were talking about Google, and that was just an example. Uh, to me, what Google or Apple or companies like this uh, did, they have already changed the world. So they started years ago, and, and they completely revolutionized the way we see things, the way we do things, and our daily lives. Now, the reason why um, I, I started following um, Mr. Guo when, when I was in China, actually. I was using the VPN, and the reason why I, so, I was so stubborn about it is because I couldn't Google anything. I couldn't read my emails. Um, and I, I started following him uh, in, in, back in 2017 over there. Um, when he talks, and the first reason why I said I want to join them is because they represent a new, the new Chinese. Those Chinese who really just don't want to change things but are actually doing something to change them. Because if you say, I want, to, I want to change things, we can all say that. It's, it's pretty easy. Talking is pretty easy. But you have someone here who put their life at risk and who is risking a lot every single day just to help their people to have a better life and just to help the world to get rid of something that is internally evil and poisoned. So I, we work together every day, most obviously. It's not always easy, so we got into a lot of fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's you talk the truth. <laughs> truth to power. It's, Search for yeah. facts. It's challenging. <laughs> it's but you know every single day that you are doing something not for your paycheck, but you are doing something to help. Uh, people in some way, even in your little, because in the company, like I, we can't be compared, right? He's the boss. <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm just trying to do something, even a very little and a very small things, just to help this new Chinese ideals to come up 
and to fight what he, we, and more people believe is wrong. <laughs>
that what's happening here in politics in the United States, which is really happening in politics worldwide, you have a populism of the right and you have a populism of the left. The people in the populism of the left are socialist. They want more government involvement in the economy. They want more government involvement in your life. They want more government involvement in just about every aspect uh, from cradle to grave. Populism on the right believes that power should be taken away from the elites and pressed down to the people, but we want less government control. We want more freedom. We particularly want the value of capitalism to start to come back to the people and just not be concentrated in the elite. It's those two forces, those conflicting forces, the Trump kind of populist right and the Cortez and Bernie Sanders left that you saw in, 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 in a perfect setting in, in this traditional setting of the State of the Union where you're in the beautiful Congress, you're right there in probably the most uh, civic, sacred space we have in the United States, the House of Representatives, which is the People's House. And there you had this kind of very dramatic, uh, you know, it looked like a hundred women all dressed in white, uh, you know, kind of like the Vestal Virgins, right? There. But it's an honor, it's an homage, homage back to our hundred years, the, uh, the suffragette movement, and they were just clashing directly with President Trump the entire speech. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Bannon had answered uh, Beijing uh, ladies' um, talk, and uh, I actually watched that uh, State of Union, and uh, he's great. Now, Kalisi, in fact, today we wanted to actually talk to Kalisi today. Kalisi had two questions for Mr. Bannon. Now, that I think that the China CCP's uh, suppression is not inferior to Hitler. Uh, Nazis, and then also that it is actually unforeseen before, and I think that it is beyond our imagination, the persecution. So, Mr. Trump, at the moment, is this launch uh, so that, you know, it, you think that what can Donald Trump help with uh, China is uh, do, uh, trying to have a freedom of religion. Do you think Donald Trump can do something if we want to have uh, freedom of religion? Look, I think the, 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 what the United States government, what President Trump's trying to do right now is an overall to try to, I think, get some balance in the, in the, in the Chinese, uh, the, chi the CCP and the, the China official government in America's uh, response. I have said for that the Chinese CCP has been running an economic war against the United States uh, in Western Europe, the industrial democracies, for 20 years. And I think many of the dissidents that have left uh, mainland China and gone to the West and have been persecuted uh, would agree with that, that this actually is, is a war. I think what President Trump's trying to do, and he said this in the State of the Union, is trying to work on an overall architecture uh, of a deal uh, to, uh, to make sure there's some sort of balance going forward and some sort of massive structural reforms to the Chinese economy. Part of those reforms is to make sure that Chinese workers are, are, are taken care of. I think one of the big concerns in the West is that the Chinese workers are essentially treated like slaves. And that's one of the reasons that you know, wages are so low in China is that uh, they're basically treated as, a, as a, almost a slave labor force, uh, which is just not acceptable. Um, I think that the religious uh, part of it and the religious freedom, you know, he does in his State Department with Mike Pompeo, this is a huge, the Secretary of State, it's a huge effort. There's a huge effort going on uh, across the U.S. government. Uh, we just had the prayer breakfast uh, this week in Washington, D.C. that the President went to. Uh, Sam Brownback, the former governor of Kansas, is the ambassador at large for religious freedom and religious liberty. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge aspect. One of the things that, that hurts us, and just to be brutally frank about it, is to have the Pope sign a deal with the CCP that essentially gives President Xi authority to approve the bishops. It's very tough for the, it's very difficult for the United States government and for other people in the United States who uh, really uh, admire the Christians in, uh, in China. Because I've said, and I gave this speech, I think I told you about the other day, last Friday here in New York City, to talk about the persecutions of Christians and Catholics, specifically not just in the Middle East, but in China, and how the, uh, the Chinese Christians are really, to me, heroes to the Catholic Church and to the Christian Church because of all the oppression that you've, uh, you've, had, to go, you've had to go through. So no, I think it's uh, the United States is first going to try to sort its relationship out with, with China and try to get some balance to it. 
Uh, obviously, the State Department and others are going after religious liberty. Uh, President, uh, uh, Ambassador Brownback. Uh, but one of the things we have to do, I think, is to absolutely, do, you know, fight the Vatican uh, and make sure the Vatican does not end up uh, in, in really in cahoots with the CCP and really a junior partner to the CCP in the selection of church officials in China. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Bannon. Uh, answer. It, there are a lot of uh, people concerning about the religious issues. Now, Mr. Bannon, so if China-U.S. trade uh, negotiation, one, uh, one, one thing is that it, uh, is talking about that uh, no, no reform. But then the thing is that uh, a lot of people, uh, Mr. Trump in the State of Union, talking about that China must have a structural reform. So can you explain in the briefest time that U.S. wanted to have the stru uh, uh, structural reform in China? Does it mean that China must have a freedom? And also that must have, must uh, is it be a political reform in China? Is it be, uh, want China to have rule of law? Is that what that means? I think, I think this is what we're, we're getting to. I think freedom in China is eventually going to come from. This is one of the reasons I think the democracy project hasn't quite gotten the, 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 the traction. I think freedom in China is going to come from economic freedom first, and then political freedom will follow from that. Uh, back in the early 2000s, people thought that you know partying with China all of a sudden become more open, more free market capitalist, more democratic. That did not happen. In fact, it went the other direction. It went more totalitarian, more mercantilist, more closed. And now you've seen with the, with the start of the social credit score, it's now become completely oppressive to the Chinese people. I think when we talk about structural reforms, what President Trump's talking about is structural reforms in state-owned industries uh, and other aspects, kind of non-trade barriers. One of the reasons I think President Trump and the American government is trying to do this is that they understand that the CCP, one of the ways they get their cash is really off of these off of these state-owned industries. And what it's trying to do is to open up these industries and make sure they compete uh, globally with other industries. And part of that is that wages for Chinese people would, would, would rise. That one of the big aspects here, and one of the big problems that the Chinese, Chinese worker is paid so little versus the other rest of the workers around the world is kind of deflated wages throughout the world, is deflated prices throughout the world. Uh, and that has, you know, they, the, the, the capitalists and the, and, the, and the materialists sell this as a great benefit to everybody. Really, it's a, it's, it's a benefit to, to principally the people that benefit from those, those, those low wages are really the CCP and the other elites here in the United States. So I think that part of this, when you hear structural changes in China or the reformers in China, part of that is to make sure this, this, this reformation of Chinese industry basic Chinese industry, is to focus on the well-being of workers, to focus on the well-being of, uh, of the working people in China, and to make sure they can get better wages, and that the CCP can skim less cash off the top to kind of funnel into money laundering back here into the real estate in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, so, Mr. Bannon, answer this question. A lot of people are still concerned about the uh, questions such as like this. Sarah, ask this question. Mr. Bannon, U.S., China, uh, they are going to be met in Hainan, right? And uh, if once, a negos once the U.S.-China trade agreement signed, then CCP is going to continue with their lies. How is U.S. going to tackle with their lies? Would you be able to launch another Common People's Campaign and then get the support of the uh, other governments to support you to anti those lies, to uh, break those lies? Well, I think, look, the, 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 the Sarah, the key thing is that we've got to counter these lies every day. I mean, one of the things that the Rule of Law Fund and others of your voice and the other people online is to counter these lies uh, with the truth. I, I strongly believe that part of the trade agreement uh, that will be done with the CCP. We'll make sure that there's make sure that there's completely open and completely uh, that you can understand and you completely get to the truth. I think it's also coming upon us. I think it's one of the reasons Miles has had such a huge impact in less than two years he's been here. We have to continue to do shows like this. You have to continue to do your shows. It's social media. It's just we've got to get the story out there, and we have to be relentless. We have to do it every day. We have to tell the story of the 500, right? The people that have 
disappeared or been in prison. We also have to tell the stories every day about what the reality is in China, and it's just going to be incumbent upon upon us to tell it. So it's I don't think we can fall back and and think about anybody but ourselves is going to do it. And hopefully, in this whole process of the trade, I will tell you one thing: this entire negotiation of the trade agreement have brought so many things to light. I mean. The, the, the sophistication and understanding of the American people about what the real situation with CCP in China is, is a, a, at this level in the last six months to nine months to, 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 to a year, right? It's, it's really gr grown exponentially. I think as soon as we get our hands around and are much more aggressive on things like uh, Amanda Bennett and, and VOA, et cetera, we even get more of the, uh, the, the, uh, the truth out there. But it's going to be a tough fight. And we're just going to have to work it every day. I'd love to be able to, there, there's, there's no magic wand we're going to be able to wave and then say it's all going to be better because it's not, it doesn't work like that. Karen, question. Mr. Bannon can have a rest. Too many questions asking Mr. Bannon. So now it's a question for Karen. Uh, so many years that you've been in China, any Anything that happened in China that makes you unhappy? Uh, uh, pollution, the fog. Uh, like uh, several days, uh, we have talked about the added value of China, materialism in China, CCP problem. But in China, uh, but then every day you live in China, every day that the, the pollution affected us the most, particularly in those cosmopolitan, such as Beijing, Tianjin, uh, Heilongjiang, these areas, they were affected greatly by the fog and the air pollution. The people in the US probably don't understand the severity of it. Uh, money laundering that is going on. What really influences people's lives every single day is pollution. Um, it didn't, when I first started in China, it was more than no, seven years ago, it was not really like that. And I could see the process, I could see how things changed. Um, take your phone, you can, you can do the experiment right now. You take your phone, you look at the weather forecast of any city in the world. You can see it's sunny, it's cloudy, it's snowing, it's raining. What now download any city of China and they have a special section for pollution to tell you how polluted the city is on that very day. Now, before talking about money, before talking about investments, people don't have clean air to breathe. Now, we've been through this with the Industrial Revolution. Um, 300 years ago uh, in the UK, so we know what it means. But being there and not being able to lead a normal life just because you don't have fresh air is terrifying. So that was one of the things that would influence my life on a daily basis. Like, I, I like running, uh, I like exercising. There were days that I would literally faint. So. It's not what you see on TV, that people are just randomly wearing masks to protect themselves. It's worse, and it's a lot worse. People, the rich, the, 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 the high level people, they are buying oxygen cans, like we buy Coke, Sprite. They buy oxygen cans from Canada fresh air. So imagine how, how bad the air quality is and imagine how ordinary people can survive and are able to survive under those circumstances and under that kind of environment. That is absolutely awful. A lot of uh, friends, many questions. And uh, we have only 10 minutes, so we can only choose several questions to ask. Someone asked Mr. Bannon particularly this question. Mr. Bannon, would you please tell us the international situation? 
we internationally they understand the threat presented by the CCP. And on March 20th, Vatican, however, would need to give this a magic wand to the CCP, let them to authorize their own bishop. What kind of action are you going to take if that happened? Yeah, I think the international situation is that, remember, with One Belt, One Road, that the, the Chinese, the CCP, has been going all the way out through uh, India, through the Sunk Continent, through South Asia, to Sub-Saharan Africa, now to uh, South America. It's one of the reasons that Bolsonaro won in Brazil, was this the CCP uh, really taking the British East India Company predatory capitalism model and perpetuating it throughout the world. Uh, in, in Europe and in, uh, in, in the Middle East, but particularly in Europe and Eastern Europe, the CCP is coming, spreading a lot of money around. I mean, they're offering to build infrastructure projects. They're offering to build uh, telecommunications projects. You know, one of the questions gets to be, why is that money not being reinvested in China? You know, where are the jobs for the Chinese when you have the unemployment and underemployment that you have in China? How come that money is not being spent back there? The... Um, no, so I think the international community, particularly these individual nations, are just waking up to the fact that when the, uh, when the CCP comes offering dollars, it's really kind of this predatory capitalism where they're going to lend you this money for these infrastructure projects that could take forever to pay it back, and they take more and more control. So that's beginning to come to, come to full fruition. I think the, uh, the aspect of, uh, of the church's involvement uh, with the CCP it has to really be investigated. Uh, what are, one of the things I'm trying to do is, is kick off a conference actually in Rome where we bring together people from throughout the, the world to discuss this about what are the details of this and particularly what we would do in the conference. The first half a day would just be to go through the persecution of Christians and Catholics in, uh, in, um, in China. That has not been done in Rome. No one's actually had a conference where we've brought dissidents, we've brought people that have been persecuted, and lay out right there uh, for the Vatican to see that, hey, you can't, you can't look away from the situation. You cannot look away from the fact that the Chinese people, and particularly Chinese Christians and Catholics, have been persecuted. So there's a lot of work to be done. The one thing I can tell you is that when people see the details and the truth, and this is the power of facts and the power of truth, I haven't met any government officials in any country that are not shocked when they step back and see what's actually happened to the working men and women, the common man, you know, old hundred names in, in, in China. And they're, and they're getting more and more concerned. Once those facts are presented, people are starting to wake up. I think it's been one of the great values of having Miles Kwok here in the United States, and somebody, particularly somebody with Miles's dynamic personality, and, and, <laughs> but also his resources and his personality and his fearlessness was able to remember there are not many people that would have the financial sophistication to understand H&A, also understand how the Chinese Communist Party at the highest levels worked, plus their influence peddling operation in the West that could combine that into what Miles did with H&A, uh, which is really the thing that kind of broke this open and really made people start to think about it as they look at all these scandals. Politicians and government leaders throughout the world, when they see the facts, they are shocked. And not only are they shocked, they don't want to be involved with it. And here's where they don't want to be involved with it. They understand the day of accounting and the day of reckoning is coming. And they don't want to be on the wrong side of history. They don't want to be looked at. They realize that they're going to have very short political lives if it looks like at a certain point in time they were taking money from a, basically the same equivalent of the Nazis and oppressing uh, their people. And so as the, and the one thing is this social credit score, as this the technology and artificial intelligence and facial recognition and biotechnology comes to oppress the Chinese more, you're going to get more and more government officials, I think, throughout the world saying, hey, we really don't want to have anything to do with this. And so it is an effort. It's got to be done every day. And you've got to, because remember, the countervailing force is they're coming with the ability to write a big check. And you've seen the corruption here in the United States. You've seen the corruption throughout. One of the things people in China should take as a real bellwether is in Brazil, where the CCP was spreading tons of money to the socialist government down there and really crony capitalism, that Captain Bolsonaro, when he ran, one of the big aspects of his victory that has not been reported in the media, but one of the big aspects that resonated with the Brazilian people was CCP really coming in and owning big chunks of, of Brazil. And the Brazilians say, hey, we, we don't mind having Chinese as investors. We don't mind having individual Chinese companies. We want partnerships. We want to access Chinese. But we don't want CCP coming in and owning 
the phys you know, owning our resources and then being able to control our politicians. You've seen that now turning in Australia. You've seen it turning in, in Brazil. Europe is still a big, a, big, uh, a big battleground for this, and it's going to have to be something that's going to be uh, talked about and discussed, I think, over the coming years. But I would tell the people in China, the more facts that come out, the more politicians throughout the world uh, start to back off. And uh, very thankful, Mr. Bannon, very clear, a lot of uh, people asking the same question. Now, another question. Now that um, many questions uh, they are concerning about, particularly now, they worry about the United States position because internal uh, political pressure because of the Democrat and the Republican may be used used by the CCP because the CCP can use a pendulum's effect. You know, one uh, they are creating conflict between the Democrats and the GOP, and in fact, such conflict is going to be bad for the United States. So, in the past 50 years, and then the China CCP used this kind of a um, uncertainty, political uncertainty and then to create a lot of uh, lies, you know. And then because uh, every time that they make a promise to one party, the other party can altogether go against it, right? So now that they're creating such conflict between these two parties and also creating the weakening uh, situation for the, m President Trump. And so the situation is being used by the CCP. And the CCP think that, okay, that, that you want our support, that you need to get to the, uh, uh, agree with us in the uh, 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 um, uh, negotiation. So there are too many questions. Now, but then there are a couple of questions we can ask. And uh, because tomorrow, Mr. Bannon, he's not going to come to our program. And uh, because tonight, uh, Mr. Bannon is going to have meeting with uh, Washington and then with other European leaders. So we're going to ask a question today, particularly questions from Hong Kong. I know that Hong Kong, uh, friends from Hong Kong, you have made a donation to the Rule of Law Fund. Uh, in fact, that we don't know who is making the donation, but I know that the Hong Kong friend that you made this donation, I may not have told Mr. Bannon. I'm going to tell Mr. Bannon later on about the uh, donation, okay? And uh, we're going to write the report. Now, your question is this. I, for Mr. Bannon, that Hong Kong, all the tycoons were controlled by the CCP. Uh, and all, all of the, all of the uh, rich people, each family in Hong Kong, each, each, each of the rich family in Hong Kong, they have a, a political committee member in the political and the National Congress. So but the thing is that China is basically con taking control of Hong Kong and then using the businessmen to help them and to, 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 to betray Hong Kong and including Hong Kong, the head of Hong Kong, the police force, and they are also working for the CCP because in Hong Kong that they are arresting a lot of the uh, Miles Corps supporters. Because, and then they are actually arresting a lot of the people who are supported uh, Miles Gore and also seize the Miles Gore's, um property. So the kleptocrat, they are very dangerous. So Mr. Bannon, what kind of action you can take to help Hong Kong and to to prosecute the Hong Kong police force because they are violating the rule of law. What kind of action we can take? It's a specific action, we have to bring this up in front of the whole world. I think the, the world right now does not have a grasp on exactly what's going on in Hong Kong. They want to look the other way. And they don't realize it's this kind of merger like it is here with the elites working with the CCP hand in glove. In Hong Kong, Hong Kong has become so repressive, so incredibly repressive from what it used to be. What we have to do, I believe, is go back and support those people in Hong Kong that are saying, hey, the deal was the deal in 1997. That deal was supposed to be unwavering. It was a highly negotiated, got negotiated for 10 years. One country, two systems, right? And that second system was based upon Western rule of law. And that's what the Hong Kong people bought into. That's what every aspect of Hong Kong society and the international community bought into. That is being flaunted every day. 
and it's being used to oppress the Chinese people. I think we have to call out, and I think we have to do it consistently, those tycoons and those moguls in Hong Kong that are working with CCP and allowing the and allowing the police to act as the like the stability force is in mainland China to act as a stability force to terrorize the free people of Hong Kong. Look, the, Hong Kong's been a beacon, a beacon of freedom and a beacon of entrepreneurial success now for you know a hundred years. And I think we've got to get revert back to that. We have to do it, I think, quickly because I actually fear for Hong Kong more than really Taiwan right now. As much as I fear for Taiwan, I think they're trying to close down Hong Kong and really put the word out that if people and businessmen who are dissidents who don't agree with the CCP fly back into Hong Kong, they can be rounded up. And I think that's got to stop. And I think we've got to stop having their assets uh, confiscated. She's there, Bannon. Very thankful, Mr. Bannon. And Hong Kong issue, a lot of people are very concerned, particularly the people invested in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong has become the money laundering base for the CCP and they have exported a fake RMB for CCP to the US and a lot of people uh, telling us that CCP have planned and uh, utilize the uh, Hong Kong currency pack with the US and they are going to create uh, the disaster calam calamity a situation for the US currency and it is because Hong Kong currency packed with the US and at the and then also at the certain time that the Hong Kong currency is going to work together with the RMB to take over the US currency and to create a chaos for the US currency can you must you must urge the US people help Hong Kong and so that they're not turning Hong Kong to become the puppet of China. You must do something. Can you tell us what you think? Well, I think it's very important. I think, I think it, it gets back to the heart of this thing, is that we can't allow uh, Hong Kong to have its rights taken. And I think that there are many international financial institutions that are, the money goes through Hong Kong that can be held accountable. I mean, the Hong Kong, and, and the, the, when you say the CCP uses Hong Kong as the money, lender, uh, the money laundering center to the West, Right, and I also think Macau is part of that also. But let's talk about Hong Kong. Is that when you is that the money laundering center? Remember, that's done in conjunction with uh, with financial institutions. I think it's incumbent upon us a rule of law is to start to call that out and start to force that into the legal system because really Hong Kong can't exist unless it's bolted hard into the financial system of the West. Remember, the, the essentially the the Chinese banks are kind of uh, segregated out from the SWIFT system. Whereas the banks in Hong Kong, principally, I believe, are connected. And, and that's one of our, our leverage points. But it's something that's got to be brought up. It's one of the things, tr trust me, the financial press in London in, in the United States want to put their head in the sand. They don't want to look at this, right? Because people are making money, right? As long as people are making money, they don't care, right? They don't really don't care how it's made. And I think it's incumbent upon the rural law fund and also other dissident, <coughs> uh, wealthy, high net in individuals who are being. Uh, uh, being, you know, their wealth being confiscated and they're actually being put in prison, I think also have to come and put their shoulder to the wheel for full transparency. If you have transparency in Hong Kong, you're going to be able to get to get back to the 1997 agreement, which was one country, two systems. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bannon. Uh, a lot of our Hong Kong friends, you must understand. Um, that the Bannon, uh, Mr. Bannon's support of Hong Kong. Now, we wish that perhaps I add more time because there are so many questions for you, Mr. Bannon. Uh, perhaps that you can drink some water if you need to go to the bathroom. We can, you can go, but we are going to add some time here today because tomorrow you're not coming to join us. So now that let let us ask Miss Karen some question. Now, people from the 90s ask you a question, Karen. Uh, online. Uh, online, a lot of people, uh, they are selling their own body online. It is very popular in China. And uh, you, uh, you spend time in China. For, for the girls in China, they just uh, sell their own body. They became the online prostitute. And then in fact that, that they're selling themselves to a lot of uh, uh, Chinese uh, government officials. What do you see this? Uh, I heard about that. 
who was very active in the internet, he was a very, very modern uh, Chinese guy. So whatever was most popular at that time, whatever was happening in, on the internet, he, he, he would tell me, he would just report, he would tell me, um, you know, this is happening in China, what do, you, what do you think of this, what do you think of that? I heard of that. Now, I have to say that unfortunately, this is not just happening in China. It's not just a Chinese phenomenon. Uh, it happened, it started <laughs> in Europe many years ago. Well, it's, it's a phenomenon that has always existed since the beginning of time. Now, what we're talking about right now is that with the um, enhancement of technology, with, with the development of the society, this is just getting worse. Now, what I can say uh, to Chinese people, but I would say exactly the same to uh, Europeans, to Americans, to any other person who uh, is doing the same. Um, your body is worth, and you as a person are worth. If you, if you start uh, selling yourself, and usually most of the time people are, especially girls, are selling themselves very cheap, it means that you don't believe in yourself. You are letting other people decide for you and you are letting other people know that you don't really care about your own being and they can do whatever they want with you. So I would say this uh, to the Chinese public, but I would say exactly the same uh, to, um, to, to the European and to, to the Americans. Uh, and this is not a matter of religion. This is not a matter of being Catholic, of being traditional, of being, it's not at all. It's just a matter of being respectful to yourself. Thank you, Karen. Very good. The last question to Mr. Bannon. So many questions, too many. But all the questions for Mr. Bannon, I cannot possibly uh, ask him because he is going to return to uh, Washington, D.C. and time is up. And her book, her, his girlfriend is waiting for him to take lunch, you know. And uh, so last question is that a very critical question. Mr. Bannon, would you please? objectively, straightforwardly, comment on the conversation you had with Wang Qishan. What do you think about his image? And then he met you with several hours. He talked with you. And also that he is, uh, he, he, he wore his pajamas uh, meeting you and then uh, uh, took off his tie and then compared with that he was uh, giving speech in the Davos. So, and then he presented a just person, a kind uh, image. But you personally, how would you describe uh, a comment on Wang Qishan? Um, and also, he owned properties in the US, and then also his family owned properties in the US. Do you think RICO Act can actually prosecute them? Uh, can you answer this last question? Yeah, I think, look, the, the, the um the key aspect of this is that you don't get to be a leader of the CCP unless you're an important figure on the world stage. I mean, you've got you know Michael Bloomberg uh, in Singapore introducing Wan Shishan as the number one most powerful political leader in the world. He just got back. Wan Shishan gave the keynote address at Davos, as I said yesterday, uh, I think 10 days ago, in which the world's media, including the Financial Times of London and every one of the you know, every, this is the top financial paper in the world. Wan Shishan was on the front page. So it is, he is lauded throughout the world. Uh, and he wasn't described there as the, the leader of the, you know, oppression of the Chinese people. He was lauded as the head of the anti-corruption, the anti-corruption effort. Uh, if you go to any of the major newspapers in the world, the Times of London, the New York Times, they don't really talk about the, the effort he's doing. I, so, um, you know, when you're at President Xi and Li Hu and Wan Shishan's level, You've already become a player in the international stage. What it's important to us to do is to, is to start to show the reality. I think the HNA investigation alone shows that there's this you know, ownership and there's been lies about the ownership of the, one of the most significant financial companies in the world. The way that we're going to counter the Wan Shan's of the world 
is not by having opinions and not by writing opinion pieces, not by giving our critiques on shows. What it's going to be able to do is to go in uh, to certain uh, levels and to prove, and I think here in an American court, uh, in this defamation suit against you, to prove what the facts are and then to tie that to the, to the demise of the chairman and CEO of, of h and and to do that across the board, to do that to an outbound insurance company, to do it to a Huawei. Once you make those connections, the world's media can't look away because they want to look away because what they're doing is making money, right? The whole, that's what, look, this, this city in back, the reason that real estate prices are starting to drop, they're down 20% in one year, is that there's much tighter restrictions on Chinese and Russian money flowing into Midtown Manhattan to buy these properties because of the work of people like Miles Kwok and, and, and others to expose the fact that money's being laundered through here, stolen from the Chinese people and laundered through here. So to me, it's very practical. Uh, you can say that Wan Shishan's a devil. You can say the, the newspaper says he's a saint. That's the most significant financial mind in the world. The, the people that are opposed to him say that he's a really bad guy doing terrible things to the Chinese people. One side's going to win and one side's going to lose. There's no middle ground here. And the way that I think we're going to win is to expose this. Now, whether that gets taken up under criminal aspects in the American legal system or in the system in Europe, that's all to be seen. But you've got to prove the facts first and then go. There are many, many techniques, including RICO, which I talked about on New Year's Eve, that can be used in these situations. But at first, you've got to start getting some facts out there and tie things together. Remember, it, this is all about a process. You know, Miles Kwok and, and others like Miles were all laughed and ridiculed less than two years ago when this all started. They were considered cranks. They were considered fools. They were considered liars. They were considered bullshit artists, right? The crazy, right? The, uh, a little bit like Breitbart was at the beginning of the Trump revolution. Well, Trump's in the Oval Office today, right? And they're not laughing anymore. They're crying, okay? <laughs> the same thing with, you know, this whole dissident and the social media of Mr. Luda and, uh, and Sarah and, uh, and our new questioner today, uh, uh, Ka Kalishi, Kalishi. Kalishi and others. The hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that Karen talked about, hundreds if not thousands of young people on social media that are retweeting this, et cetera, is the key to this. But like I said, one side's going to win and one side's going to lose. And what we have to do every day is to do this and to expose. If you want to stop Michael Bloomberg from going to Singapore and getting on a stage and announcing Washi Shan as the most significant political figure in the world and having the people at Davos invite him a couple of months later and they're all adoring crowd, right, of all the biggest money managers and hedge fund managers in the world to introduce him as the most genius financial brain in the world, then the way to do that is investigations, the way to do that is exposure. So the, the burden is on us now. We know what the mission is. The burden is on us to go do it. As Miles says, this is the year of action. So kind of, uh, as like I say to Wan Shi Shan, game on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bannon. And in such a busy time, and uh, she consecutively sitting with us and broadcasting with us. And, uh, you know, he stayed in New, uh, New York City for several days, you know. And uh, so God's gift to us. And uh, God's gift to us, such a great, great friend. And our beautiful Karen. And even though that she's uh, shaking, she's nervous, she still be talking and gave us wonderful, uh, telling us wonderful insight. Uh, and then so she is not going to cry okay when she get home and then mr bannon and uh, you will be uh safe and then also we now telling monchi san that he's a uh, game on and uh, so monchi san and uh, they are going to uh you know probably going to uh, do something to you so you must keep yourself safe okay and uh, Mr. Bannon, you must really take care of your own safety because Meng Jianzhu, Wan Qishan, they can, they are ruthless. They are, they are very daring. They do anything. And in, in you see, because they can actually make use a lot of the vested interest people then and to uh, harm you. And so, and of course that, uh, you know, in, in, in London, in uh, Hong Kong, a lot, 
a lot of people actually care, scared of Wang Qishan, not uh, Xi Jinping. The people do most harm is uh, Wang Qishan, not Xi Jinping. So today, but anyway, today we are concluding our show. We uh, we give uh, Mr. Bannon and Karen the greatest uh, applause to show our gratitude to them to share their time with us. Thank you very much. And today our uh, uh, broadcasting is is great. And uh, Mr. Bannon uh, again to create the momentum in our history. And also that the Karen, with uh, risking your personal safety, you talk to us and it's wonderful. Next year today, and uh, CCP is really going to face a uh, crisis or perhaps that they were already disappeared. But anyway, a lot of questions we cannot continue to ask and we will continue to explore those uh, questions with Mr. Bannon. So everything just the beginning, 2019, is the time that we will get rid of the CCP and that we really must take action and action and action. Thank you very much. And then I am going to shake your hand, Mr. Bannon, for all the ladies in the East. Okay, and um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And goodbye. <laughs>